This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hey, guess what, Mason? Yes, go on. This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Sick. I thought you wanted some good news, so I've delivered. That's very good news. Mm, Just like they delivered to you, but we'll talk about it later. Don't worry about it. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk- Excuse me? It's good to be here. (laughs) I hope this isn't going to be a regular thing. I like it when I do funny interrupting things. But I do not like it when it's turned on me. That's all right. Episode two of the show, and you've already you've already set it off the rails. Uh, yeah, that's Mason. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is uh, this this podcast going to be all about chaos. <laughs> Just kidding. I uh, like I like it clean and orderly. Absolutely. So continue with your intro. Thank you. Where was I? Uh, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mister Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host. On his best behaviour, I hope. Great to be here. <laughs> Nick Mason. Great to be here. Uh, what's going on? Nothing, just hanging out, you know. We're doing a, recording a late one. It's true. Yeah, we these recorded. Get, sorry? These get pretty manic, so <laughs> settle does. in, everybody. Or they sound the same. I don't know. Or we, or we just sound exhausted. It's tough to yeah. It's tough to know when you're in it, you know what I mean? I this kombucha. When you're in the trenches of recording a, 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 oh my God, a fake so radio true. show. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Podcasting is as real as any media, Mason. Is it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's very niche. Yeah. It's always the, when I meet somebody new, it's always the last thing I bring up. <laughs> yeah, same. It's literally my job. What do you do? Well, I'm sort of a teacher five years ago. <laughs> yeah. I tell cab drivers in that now because yeah. it's just easier. What do you do? I'm a teacher. I have a podcaster. What's that? It's like a. Yeah. So, you know, it's like. You know what a tram what is, that right? Pay? Do you know what a tram is? <laughs> it's like a box on wheels. Well, anyway. This box doesn't have any wheels on it, and we, we record a podcast in it. <laughs> That's right. So this week, uh, it's the spookiest season of the year, obviously. It is spooky. Speaking of, I just want to mention up top, normally we'd release an episode on BigSandwich.co of our uh, podcast, We Got We Got This Covered Covered, which covers mm. clickbait yes. and clickbait articles. But because it's the spookiest season of the year, we actually recorded a commentary, which is up right now, uh, for Freddy versus Jason. Frederick the murderer versus Jason, Jason the, the murderer. murderer. <laughs> Two of the murderers going together to do who can do the most murders. Who's the best murderer? I think it's probably Jason who does the most murders from memory. I think he is the, um, like, he, 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 it's, they feel like more honest murders. Yeah, that's know? true. He's straight yeah. up. He's not tra- trapping you in a weird dream dimension. Yeah. But I had a lot of fun with it. recording this one. Absolutely. I had, we had not seen this since it came out in cinemas in 2003. Which we inexplicably saw, but... We used to see everything then, so yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, but yeah, it was it was good fun. Also, quite just quietly, I thought we might run out of things to say because we don't know a lot about horror movies. But turns out we spun our wheels. We, we made spun it. so many wheels. Only an hour and a half. We learn we learn all kinds yeah. of facts about J- Jason and Freddy. <laughs> that's it. You know, we uh, we learned about all the the billions of alternate scripts for this movie that oh came out. Oh my goodness, so yeah. many. So the uh, yeah, so that's up right now. It is nine bucks a month if you do want to sign up. But it's not just that. There's a huge back catalogue of other movie commentaries and bonus mm-hmm. podcasts and early videos and. Whatever else is up there, I can't remember. Dances? No, there's not a single dance up there. Should we add some dances? You could, if you upload a dance, okay. if you send me a dance, I will upload it. Okay, great. I'm not kidding. I'll, I'll. You'll forget. I will forget. <laughs> I forgot. It was, it was. You, you put up a, a comment on uh, Ryan Reynolds' Free Guy trailer. That's right. And I, and I said that I was going to put up Space Invaders Deadpool, and I forgot the mm. comment. And. Uh, but if you look at a lot of the top comments there, it's just people like, "Where's that comment?" Yeah, good. You ruined everyone's day. <laughs> Uh, speaking of ruining everyone's Should day. I do it now? <laughs> no, don't make promises you won't keep, Mason. I'll do it right now, James. Okay, do it. Oh, I'm going to. So uh, this week we're going to talk about how Quibi is dead. Oh, no. Uh, we're going to talk about Uncharted. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a very exciting trailer for some mates of ours, which is coming to Netflix. Oh, yeah, we'll that's talk right. About. There's also some uh, No Time to Die Bond news. Uh, the, the Dark Universe is expanding yet again. Excuse Battlestar me, Galactica, John McClane is back. Wait, but... wait, wait. You snuck that in real like, real part? subtle like the Dark Universe. I'm, I'm not hallucinating. We're right? going to talk about it. Okay, great. Uh, Fast and Furious is coming to an end. Snyder Cut news. Got some other stuff in here. And then our <laughs> topic is, of course, um, we, we like to pick a topic that's uh, indicative of the season. That's right. It's the spookiest time of the year. I'm not talking about bloody tax time, Mason. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh. Anyway, we're going to review all the pumpkin spice lattes that are out there. That's right. That's right. We're going but, to rank them all. No, that's what do- people like, right? Ranking. That's right. Now, we're going to talk about cursed productions. That's right. So, which was actually your idea. And I vetoed it, but we didn't have that's a better right. one. So, so this is what that's we're back in. No, I think it's a great idea because uh, we were going to just do like Halloween stuff that we like or whatever. So mm. I think this is terrific. Anyway, now, I just I just a quick update. Yep, yep. Uh, currently, all the top comments 
on the Free Guy trailer is like a hundred in a row that all just say, say no to fish bowls. <laughs> so I guess it's inhumane to put a fish in a fish bowl. Yeah, right. So, and somebody's, somebody's caught wind of that. Uh, so uh, say no to fish bowls. Goldfish need 20 gallons because they become huge. Isn't that a myth? Oh, uh, like not, not according to their environment. Not, a, not according to all these people. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. I can't argue with all these people. <laughs> that's right. On the internet. Yeah, that's right. So Quibi Mason. Oh, yeah. It's sh- oh, time codes as well if you want to jump around. Uh-huh. It's shutting down as of December 1st. It only just started in April. And you yeah. might think, well, that would have been a bad time to start a streaming service with brand new shows that people can watch in a time when content is king. And that's also... Right. Everyone's um, stuck in their homes. Yeah, that's They're right. They're just looking at that TV. They're like, wish there was more stuff coming out of my TV. That's right. Well, Going into my TV? Well, it can't come out of the TV. No, you But right. it was only mobile, which they recently changed. But mm. guess what? You're six months fucking late. Uh, so what happened oh, is- Oh, so this is going to be a rude podcast. Mason, that's late, wow. so it's rude. So apparently, approximately uh, t- uh, 200 employees are out of work, which is a massive shame, and it leaves dozens of projects from partners in limbo. But I believe that anybody who puts content on, on Quibi also own it. So that oh, when so they, they went can to take it out. when they went to sell it, people were like, well, we don't what are we buying specifically? Mm. This app that nobody uses. Yeah, yeah. But at least, James, mm. at least Reese Witherspoon got six million dollars to do that voiceover thing where she 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 did the voiceovers over like animals doing fierce stuff in the in nature. That's fun. And it was like Yas Queen. That was the show? That was the show. But there is good stuff on there, isn't there? The I golden mean, yeah, arm. That's, yeah, that's the thing that I said. The Reese Witherspoon <laughs> narrates over, over wildlife documentaries. Uh, and also uh, something I also learned this week. Get uh, someone who does voices. Yeah, Reese Witherspoon. I mean, other than her own voice. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, I mean the, the, it's Michael Winslow. I mean, there's no reason that they should have hired Reese Witherspoon except for the fact that her husband hired her because he's on the board. Oh, Dak Shepard. No. Oh, no. I'm thinking of um, the other one. <laughs> yes, go on. <laughs> Let's Kristen see if you can pull it. Stewart. Kristen Bell. Bell, thank yes. you. Kristen Stewart is another one. Mm. I'm talking about women. I could obviously confuse them all, it turns out. Uh-huh. Uh, so as of the third quarter, Quibi reached uh, 710,000 subscribers. No, yeah, does that make sense? That number makes sense when it came out then. That physically is a number, yes. Yeah, okay, good. Yes. It's not an imaginary number or a negative number. I just so couldn't yes. work out whether that made sense when I said it. And Do you want to show me the figure and I can confirm whether seven, or not? It's 7, 1, O, oh, and then three more O's. Yeah, that's 710,000, yes. Yeah. Now that I see that, that was absolutely correct. Uh, but also, it's um, which is down 300,000 from the previous quarter. So they planned this year to have 7.4 million paying subscribers and they are obviously not near that. Didn't quite make that, no. They got $1.75 billion in funding. Uh, it, that was what it raised through Hollywood studios and tech companies and other investors. Suckers. Which, suckers, I should say, mm-hmm. which will be returned to its investors as specified in the company's operating agreement. So this feels like they're just like, we got to shatter this because we're not yeah, bouncing right, back, right. obviously. Uh, and as part of the statement, which is from uh, Meg Whitman and uh, what's Eisen Mike, what's his name? Uh, Jeffrey, no. <laughs> Who's the guy who runs this thing? I don't the know. The former Disney exec. Well, James, why would I put that information in my brain now? <laughs> it used to be at Disney. T- okay. It's uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg? Jeffrey Katzenberg, okay, yeah. Okay, right. God damn I was, it, I was it is in Heisenberg. There. Yeah. I was like, no, that's the guy from <laughs> Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, they, they, they released this joint statement. They said the world has changed dramatically since Quibi launched and our standalone business model is no longer viable. They should have said and never was, but, you know, whatever. The circumstances of <laughs> yeah, launch. That's the thing, though. Like if we didn't have this pandemic, people maybe would be watching stuff on their, on their phones. Do you really think this would have? Under- I, wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't have done this. No, exactly. I think also the marketing was really confusing because yeah. what's on this? People don't know. I like, still don't know. You're launching a, just the Golden Arm Show as far as I'm show. concerned. But if you're launching, like they didn't really explain what, what Quibi is, mm. uh, what, what it, like, what are the, what do you have on it? The celebrities, because I'm still fine. Like, I didn't know that the Reese Witherspoon thing. Yeah, like you probably want people to know, you know, who's right. on it. Yeah, because yeah. I had huge names on it. So the circumstances of launching during a pandemic is something we could have never imagined. But other businesses have faced these unprecedented challenges and have found their way through it, which is very, very true. So I don't know. I feel like if everybody's at home, you don't really want to watch eight-minute shows on your phone. <laughs> no, especially since I'm on my phone already doing other non quibi related thing, like, things. You're cutting in on a model which already exists on TikTok and YouTube mm. and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And what are you providing here? Mm. Do you know what I mean? This would have worked better as 
a variety of social media platforms. Yeah. And uh-huh. on top of that, you can't share any of the stuff that you're watching, can't, including can't screenshot screenshots. It, yeah. It's uh-huh. like, what you, what's your plan here? It is. It's so boomer focused, this entire thing. I'm sort of fascinated to see how it'll shake out. Like, I, I kind of hope that in years to come, like, there'll be a, a whistleblower of some per, some, some kind who's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we just we took the money and we bloody. We bloody we, we gave it to Reese Witherspoon. Gave it to Reese Witherspoon. This is her husband speaking. This is how he talks. This is, I mean, this is how I talk. Also, she, she's got a massive Apple deal. Like, she's crushing. It. I guess because she does have that. I honestly thought, company. and maybe it's because it's late. I thought you were going to say she's got a massive apple too. Does she really? She's got this massive apple. Where'd you get it? Why she? Why she, she's not tied up for a buck? Look at the big apple she buys. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Quibi is. I, I'm. Mm. We're thinking of covering something for Caravan of Garbage. Yeah. Uh, upcoming. That's right. Um, but before we get to that, the in, documentary will be called Trials and Quibilations. <laughs> Very good. So I'm taking it before anybody oh else can take it. I'm going to. I'm going to do it. That's going to be one of those Netflix programs where it's like we didn't know what we were doing. We thought we were changing the world. You know, <laughs> like right. there's people who work yeah, at Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I'm, we all made a hundred million dollars each, but we realized we did the wrong thing <laughs> when we ruined the economy. It's of the world. It's just interviews of them on their yachts, just <laughs> yeah. being like, "Yeah, in a way, I do feel slightly bad about it." Are you considering giving back any of the money? No, obviously, I can't because I, mean, I bought this yacht. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You exactly. Know. I yeah. mean, cash, but yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, we also, though, got our first look at Uncharted officially. That's right. It's Tom Holland in the Nathan Drake get-up. Mm. He's looking pretty good. He's got all the things that you need. A dirty Henley. A cargo pants. Cargo pants. Full uh, of jammy dodges. <laughs> no doubt. Yes. And, uh, what, like, the ring the, on his on his neck of lace. Yes. And he's got the, the double holsters. Yeah, he's looking right. good, man. He's looking pretty good. That's he's what got, you want out of he, this. He's got that signature Nathan Drake smirk, I think, oh, you can goodness. see in that photo. Yeah. That smugness. Yeah. That's the, that's the smugness of a killer. That's right. You know? So uh, now all he has to do is just get in there and and not speak in his voice, in his own voice, in his own voice. What about if he does his Spider Man American voice, or is that too like, oh no, too much trouble? <laughs> somebody, somebody who's stronger than me, help! <laughs> you know? Yeah. Do you think? Or is he going to do like he's going to do a lower register? Do you think? Yeah, maybe he's got a tough guy voice. Yeah, probably got a tough guy. Probably got a tough... I mean, remember he did the Devil all the time. That was, yeah. he, I haven't seen it, but maybe he's. He's probably not like the devil's all the time. Maybe like the devil is all the, the time. The devil is all the time, Tom, Tom Holland. We agree. It's very you are so correct there. So the other thing is, and this kind of just broke today for dear us. Dear diary. <laughs> Hello. The devil's all the time. Tom Holland dear. <laughs> he's 20... Did me first day on a big Hollywood movie. <laughs> he's twenty four. Like he's, <laughs> he's he's a grown man. No, 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 no. This is how he speaks. So, um, and he's done multiple Hollywood movies, man. Right. No, every day, every time he packs up his little bindle and he goes and he, it's like it's his first Hollywood movie. <laughs> Hollywood. Hollywood movie, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we saw Mark Wahlberg. I said, how are we going to even get there? It's Uncharted. Oh, that's very good. And then, then he explained it was just the name of the movie. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I still do school classes in between takes. <laughs> you know, Me they... ma said I look ever so brave. <laughs> He's 24. I'm but... Nathan Drake. <laughs> I'm Nathan Drake, isn't it? Nathan. Nathan Drake. <laughs> so Mark Wahlberg was yes. spotted on Instagram wearing a fake moustache. He wasn't spotted. He, he feels himself. He was spotted, Mason. <laughs> he was caught in a lie. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't, there's a couple of ways this could go. I'm a bit woozy from doing the Tom Holland voice. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he is as well. Yeah. But uh, so they've already started filming and he didn't have a mustache. So either he acquires a mustache mm. through this film, like he grows one. Or he acquires one that's on like a, it's a, it's a he has to swap it for a bag of sand <laughs> <laughs> so the trap doesn't spring. They could be CGIing one in because of, yeah. of the backlash. Yep, that's right. Because Sully's defining characteristic is that he has a moustache. Sure, yeah. Or it could be that he's doing – they do undercover stuff. They'll go into a party and maybe yeah, he's I'll, wearing See, a fake that's one. the thing. I think people would be mad if he was like – like he puts it on for one scene and he's like, imagine if I actually had a moustache. Ha. And then someone's like, well, actually, you look good. And he's like, shut up. Yeah. Shut <laughs> Someone, up. Someone's like, actually, you do in the video game version of this movie <laughs> we're in. Did you see? You also met the other na- the voice of Naked Drake. Oh. Na- Naked Drake. Naked Drake. I'm sure there is a there's a mod. There's a Metal Gear Solid <laughs> character probably called Naked Drake at this point. Is it Nol- it's Nolan North. It's Nolan North. Yeah, Nolan North. Nolan North. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people like wanted him to play it, but it's not really like he's older and he's not he's not that kind of actor. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, sure. he probably is, but you know. Hmm. And there was also people point to that Nathan Fillion short where because Nathan Drake is 
It is Nathan it's Fillion. It's Nathan Fillion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In every respect, the yeah. hair, the face. Do you think Fillion will get a, a cameo of some sort? I don't know. Well, he's not officially tied to it, really. No, I know, but maybe they bring him in as that's fan service. That's not how things work, Mason. Uh, yeah, probably not. Or it is how things work. I mean, I oftentimes know. these days it, it kind of is how things work. Well, that's true, isn't it? Mm. Uh, so this is exciting, and this hits close to home for us, Mason. There's uh, an earthquake. There's an earthquake. God, it's exciting out there. It's really great. I'm so excited. Now, just to clarify, we don't really get earthquakes in Australia. We might get a slight tremor very irregularly because we're in the centre of a tectonic plate. Oh. So we're safe, aren't we, Mason? Actually, yeah. I mean, except for all the bushfires and spiders and whatever. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, but Auntie Donna have a trailer for their Netflix TV series. Very exciting. And I'm so excited. I think we've Broden told us maybe a year ago that this was happening. James, l- let me let me tell maybe you. Longer? When when Broden, friend of the show Broden from mm. Auntie Donna uh, came up to us and he said that they'd signed a Netflix deal and they'd written it and they'd filmed it and they'd edited it and produced it and they had a definitive release date. That's when I knew. <laughs> I had a little inkling <laughs> Something, something was, was coming going up. On. Let's just say I had a little hunch that something you knew, was happening. You yeah, knew, yeah. But it's coming out November the 11th. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. that's and that that's the good thing about when they on Netflix they're like, here's an ad. It's like it's out in two weeks or whatever. Couldn't have happened to a nicer bunch of guys. Absolutely. Right. And we've talked about this off air, but if this had have gone to one of the networks here, they would have definitely fucked it up. Yes. And I don't mean Auntie Donna would have fucked it up. I the, mean the networks, the networks have, here yeah. would have fucked yeah. it up. So just to get that free reign and to get Ed Helms involved yeah. and a bunch of other really exciting people. Uh, look, yeah, I mean. I mean, you've also got your Ben Russells and your Michelle Braziers. They're in there. Um, in there. Yeah, yeah, but, you, mm. you know, it's it's got. For people out there who are like, you keep recommending Auntie Donna mm. and they seem to, they sound funny, but we're not. I'm not going to watch this unless there's big American celebrities involved. Whoa. Ed Helms is in it. Yep. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic in it, Paul F. Tompkins is yep. in it, Kristen Schaal is in it, yep. Tawny Newsom from Star Trek Lower Decks is yes. in it, along with her co-star and our personal best friend Jack Quaid yep. is in it, as well Minimum as... Minimum Betrayal. That's right, as well as uh, his co-star from The Boys, Anthony Starr, is in it briefly. He plays so. Homelander, so yeah, right. this is... I'm I'm so I haven't seen any I haven't seen any more than what no, everyone else right. has, but uh-huh. judging by literally every other piece of media that they've ever put out. This will be funny. This, this is gonna be, be good, great. Good stuff. Uh, six episodes. Congratulations. So Zach, Mark, Broden, but also mm. uh, if you don't know That's it. Behind, no, the behind <laughs> the scenes there's Sam yeah. who does a lot of writing on yep. the, on on their stuff. Uh, uh, Max, who's their director, and yep. uh, Tom, who does all the music. So, exactly. there, congratulations! To and all there's those a guys. variety of other Australian talent that have worked on it as before. Yeah. Matt Stewart's been in, been in the skit as right, well. Yeah. Uh, so it's just um, it's really exciting. Yeah, and uh, we're probably going to do some crossover stuff. Yeah. Um, with those guys, there's a little bit of promo, mate. Obviously, it'll cost them, but I'm looking forward to take, <laughs> take, right. taking that Netflix money, mate. Okay. Yeah. I thought you meant cost them in terms of standing. Oh yeah, it's going to cost them <laughs> and monetarily money also. And monetarily and also. Um, I was going to say. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have have, have tweeted us uh, this week, and they're like, um, "I, I, you know, I'll, maybe I'll check them out." Or like, you keep saying they're funny. Uh, what, what should I watch? Because again, they have so much mm. stuff on YouTube. Yeah, I like the school nurse skit. I also I mean, like. I, the like, nurse I mean, skit. yeah, you could you could really click on anything, but they do it in, in seasons, so they have like a theme. Yeah, they, there's yeah. A, they have a series called Glenridge Secondary College, yeah. which is set. It's a it's a bunch of uh, interconnected sketches set in a school. So maybe yeah. just start at that. Yeah, start start at the first. But one. I love their 1999. And like and they did, they've just got rant. There's a subway sketch which is just them at a table. It's yeah. really like low production value, and they're just talking about how to deal with the Jared Fogel situation. Mm, yeah, which I first saw that I was crying. Like yeah. it was because it's so funny. So they have look. Well, I'll just I'll just recommend one more sketch, and then, okay. we'll, then we'll move on with our lives for yep, God's yep. sakes. Uh, they have a sketch called Jambalam, oh, yeah. which is a uh, the thing about it is, and the 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 reason it's funny, James. Yeah. If I could explain humor to you, a, you a layman, yeah. is that it's a sketch about an app, and it's like meant to be like a like a soft and nice and friendly uh, uh, sketch for. We're developing a new app, yeah. And the way that these sketches kind of goes, you sort of they all sort of naturally like an app sketch, they all sort of naturally go a certain way. Yeah. They're a little bit weird, and but they're also like we're corporate and, and you know, we're corporate and professional. This sketch does not do that at all. No, absolutely it just, not. It goes in a whole different direction. It's, and I it's, love it. it's very indicative of apps, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's absolutely right. It's bloody ribbon app yeah. culture. Anyway, congratulations to all them boys. Yeah. I hope it gets two seasons, which is the maximum of things that people that think. That We're get wishing on you two seasons, <laughs> Auntie Donna boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Auntie Donna's big old house of fun, which is yeah. coming out in, very soon. Exciting. Uh, and uh, off the back of that, uh, things on Netflix, but this is cancelled. Turns out, oh, no, Hunter no. season three. I thought you were going to say things. Are, so th- things that are cancelled. Auntie Donna's big old They're house done. of fun. They had a it's chance. Done. They had. Yeah, yep, yeah, they, blew they blew it. it. 
Uh, so Mindhunter season three is unlikely. Nah. David Fincher says working on season two was like 90 hours a week for six to seven months. Yeah, it's right. exhaustive. It's very expensive. And um, it, it didn't rate that well, which oh, is right, the key okay. thing. So Netflix are like, mm. Also, wow. I got to two seasons. So yeah, it's exactly. Out. So there's, there's a whole lot of through lines that happen in that show that I really wanted to see through. Uh, I know BTK is like in it uh-huh. and, you know, there's personal relationships or whatever, but that's a massive shame yeah. that that is uh, not happening. But We'll never get to see BTK invent the BLT, which he does in real life. <laughs> that's true. And they caught him. He went to jail for it. That's right. yes. <laughs> and all his murders. Finally, it's like Al Capone. They didn't get him for the mafia stuff. They got him for the tax <laughs> evasion. BTK, they got him for, for inventing the BLT. <laughs> Mason. Uh Oh. The tomatoes made the bread soggy. You're going to the it's big not, house. A tomato, tomato is not a good thing to have on a sandwich unless it's super fresh and it's got to be a specific type of ripeness of that tomato to make it happen. Anyway, you know I mean? life in the slammer. Good. Mm-hmm. And for the murders. Oh, yeah. Uh, so get ready to die quietly in the comfort of your own home, Mason. Oh, thank God. Because uh, according to Bloomberg, Apple and Netflix are in talks for the next James Bond film, No Time to Die, to purchase it. Oh, I thought uh, that was off again. Well, okay, here's the thing. Okay. So... It's a $250, $250 million movie. You can make the joke. That's not a lot for a movie. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I misspoke. Yep, that's the joke. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they marketed the hell out. James, what I was going to do was give you time for an edit point to be put in and then, oh, okay. and so you didn't was? shame yourself for your, mis- for your misspeaking. That's what was happening there. So they mar- sometimes you see an eyes egg, James. That's true. Yeah. So they marketed the hell out of it multiple times. Hey, listeners, yeah. as if a movie would cost two hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> that's a low price for a movie. James has really embarrassed himself here. <laughs> he's really he's he's, he's doing the thing where he's like, I'm laughing actually, but he's crying I'm, on I'm the hurt. inside. I'm yeah. hurt. Yeah. yeah. Go go uh, on. That's thanks. They marketed it a lot. It's you, it's you, come, folks, it's you and me against James. In this <laughs> what? Episode. That's right. That doesn't seem okay, right. Okay, James can't hear us though, so it's okay. I've got headphones on and oh, you, when we're sitting in the same room. But no, I cannot hear you. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so the idea is um, that because they've marketed it twice because it was supposed to come out earlier. Yeah. And then it's supposed to come out in November mm-hmm. and that didn't work and now they've got to push it again to April or whenever it was mm-hmm. supposed to be. So they're like, ah, oh, boo, I'd imagine this is costing us a lot in marketing. Mm-hmm. So if you want to buy it on streaming, you have to pay for it twice. That's right. You pay for it once and then you wait four months and then you get to pay for it again and then they'll finally let you watch it. But you can never, ever keep it. It's not, it's not, That's a, right. not a digital copy you can keep. That's right. Yeah. Daniel Craig comes to your house and he deletes it personally. <laughs> He's just happy to be not doing James Bond anymore. He's so happy to wipe any memory of that from everybody's mind. But anyway, you were saying. Yeah, so uh, so the MGM maintain, though, that this is not for sale and that they want to preserve the theatrical experience, et cetera, and so forth. Okay. But here's the thing. Go on. We'll see. Yeah, we will. Won't we? We'll that's... see MGM. Yeah. yeah. Because AT&T uh, mentioned this week in some kind of investor call where they're like, everything's fine, but it's not fine. Everything's bad. <laughs> That's the thing they don't know. They can't hear, but it's bad. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, t- in relation to Tenet, John Stanky said, I can't tell you that we walked away from Tenet saying that it was a home run. Okay. And they're basically like, also like, but we're glad, glad that we did the experiment all the way. No, you're not. You absolutely are not, no. <laughs> no. What do you think you were going to save film? You weren't. You couldn't save it if your life depended on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... The other thing is apparently the money being thrown at this is hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. Which makes me think four or five hundred million probably if you're covering all your costs. Um, James, in a way. Yeah. That's a lot of money. It is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen. Yeah. But we, I mean, numbers in a lot of places in the US are going up. Mm-hmm. When Tenet came out and theatres were open in a lot of places, people, people still didn't go. Yeah. I, do, I, I don't know what this is going to look like essentially. Anyway. Put we'll it on say. Quibi. Put on Quibi, mate. Ten minute chunks. That's it. Cut right in the middle of every action sequence. Yeah, but make sure you don't let anybody know that you, that it's on Quibi. Quibi. That's right. That's yeah. what you're about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Apple also announced. This is another a different bit of news. Really? They're going to do the Bride, which is inspired by the classic monster film Bride of Frankenstein. It stars Scarlett Johansson okay. as the bride and it's described as a story centred around a woman who was created to be the ideal wife by a brilliant entrepreneur, probably an Elon Musk type, mm-hmm. uh, when she rejects her creator because he's an Elon Musk type. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. But we're big fans, obviously. We've yeah, talked about right. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that guy. Yeah, yeah. Love him. Uh, yeah, we love him. Uh, uh, listen to Secretly, we don't love him. Like <laughs> we don't like him that much. He sucks. Just he between sucks. us. He sucks. He sucks. Don't tell Mason, but we don't like him. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, so she's forced to flee her confined existence, uh, confronting a world that sees her as a monster. While on the run, she finds her true identity, her surprising power, and the strength to remake herself as her own creation. So do you think the surprising power she finds is emotional? Mm. What do you think? It's like lasers. It's probably lasers. I hope so. I hope it's lasers. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be cool, right? Why did emotional it strength? God. <sighs> The only strength I want to see is lasers. That's, right. that's exactly right. So that's cool, I guess. Pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. I mean, that falls in line with like the modern updates they've been they've been looking to do, including starting with the Invisible Man. Yeah, I you guess that's I mean? true. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I'd imagine she's not going to have all the like the weird hair, and she's not pieced together by like different bits of skin and stuff, is she? I like, mean, except in the newer, like that Kenneth Branagh version, I think she was. Oh, I didn't say that one. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So, I mean, but that, I guess my question then is, but why does she go on the run if she just looks like Scarlett Johansson? Because the guy's trying to find her. He's I like, guess. you're my wife. I'm Elon Musk. Wasn't there Musk. a bit about like, uh, the, 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 she's on the run from the public or whatever. They, they, they all think she's a real ugly. Um, girl. confronting a world that sees her as a monster. That's yeah, you're right. One. Yeah. You're okay. right. There you go. I reckon regular Scarlett Johansson bolts through the neck. Yeah. Big hair with a lightning bolt. Through yeah, it. That's right. <laughs> Whatever's going on in that look. <laughs> And there's a scene mm. um, where she needs to get info on the Elon Musk type. Yeah. So she unscrews the bolt. She throws her head down like a like a <laughs> like an air, air conditioning shaft, <laughs> so she can spy on him. But she's got a bit of fishing wire on. I was so going to say because otherwise she'd have to return. Yeah, yeah. yeah I had to like, think on my feet there for a second. I knew good. you'd ask. I knew you'd ask how she'd reel her head back in. You're all over it, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to bloody reel your bloody head back in there, mate. I'll tell you that much, mate. I'll bloody tell you that much. So I wonder whether it will turn out that her... more than a bloody fish. She's like... Do you think it's going to turn out that her creator is actually a Frankenstein? Oh, Elon Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of yeah. people have pointed Musk and out... Sc- Muskenstein. You know, Elon Muskenstein, Muskenstein. That's good, yeah. yeah. But, you know, people have also said that, like, it's not his name and whatever. But then people <laughs> say that, like, it is technically his name because he is a Frankenstein because his true. father's name was Frankenstein. Yeah. Whatever. But it could be, like... If he was an Elon Musk type, mm-hmm. that he was created by a Tesla type company to be the CEO. Oh, twists upon Where, twists. Wh- are they paying us to write this movie for him? They James? certainly aren't, Mason. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> We've got good ideas. We've got good ideas. We have some. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of good ideas, go on. Um, well, it was. Let's see if this is. I'm just going to be ruminating on bad ideas about this movie for a while. Can't so wait, I'm really I'll just jump out, jump out with them later. You've already had a great idea with the head on the string down the. Uh, that's not my only idea, James. <laughs> I've got many good ideas. <laughs> so, Battlestar Galactica is getting a reboot, according okay. to, according to Hollywood Reporter. But this is a movie and separate to the reboot of the show, I guess, which is happening. Wait, so wait, wait. So we're getting two reboots, I guess, of, the, of Battlestar the... Galactica, which itself was a reboot. Yeah, but also maybe this, maybe the show isn't. Rebooting anymore? Oh, I, don't, I see. I right. don't know. Okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so they, every few years, they're like, "It's back. We're bringing it back." I don't know where we're at, but Simon Kinberg will write and produce. He's of course known for producing all of the X Men films. Mm-hmm. Say that. Say what you will of that. Yeah, they variety. Is he one of our famous bullet dodgers? Yes, he is. like he's done some good stuff. And but some he also bad did stuff. Dark Phoenix. But like, is that the worst X Men, or is that like? Half of the course X Men at that point. That's a good whatever. point. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I don't necessarily think this is bad news, but I just think it's odd that they would do a movie because I don't know if it would work as well. You have to explain m- the entire backstory of Battlestar Galactica. But then maybe do you do the original Cylon War? Because like, yeah, okay, the sure. series, even though it's a reboot, is set like. Decades after the yes. first mm-hmm. Silent War, even yeah, though they're not connected yeah. or whatever, I should watch that series all the way through. Very good, because I didn't, I didn't make it all the way through. But it was because it was on TV at the time, and I didn't know what time anything was on because they shifted <laughs> constantly. It's cancelled. It's out of yeah, order. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I should definitely go back and watch. You that. Had that decade where your remote control was out of battery. So That's you right. Didn't know how to change it. You just so. kept switching them around to see if it worked. Sometimes it did. It was crazy. <laughs> anyway, John McClane is back in a yeah. commercial for batteries or something. God. People, some people were actually excited because they were like, John McClane is back. And some people were like, yes. But I'm like, if this isn't an ad, which it is, mm-hmm. let's not. <laughs> this Come isn't. on, yeah. Uh, so it basically he meets up with a limo driver and he's from up. From the first one. From the first one. And he's up against the tech guy from the first one or something. Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, But everyone's much older. So I'm like, I think that's the same actor. But I, okay, I can't sure, tell at this right. point. And it's. It's as boring as anything he's ever done. So. Okay. Now, is there is there car chases yeah, and Yeah, there's gunfire? car chases and he's – I mean, it's about your standard Bruce Willis stuff. It's probably – there's a little bit more excitement in it than a lot of things, but also because okay. you only need three minutes of content out of him. That's true, yeah. You know what I mean? So, so he, com- he comes in all guns blazing because yeah. generally speaking he's got three minutes worth of acting in the tank That's right. for any given production. A lot so. of the movies he's in, he's like – now he's in only in it for like 15 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. I know people wanted to mention, wanted us to mention it, and 
So what is what is the what is the narrative he thrust? To, his, his car battery died. Okay, and he has to get a battery for his car. Uh, so he has to. So he gets the limo driver, and he goes and gets the battery, and he switches it over. But he's intercepted by the hacker from the first Die Hard. Oh, he wants also, to do terrorism. Yeah, he wants to, or to shoot John. A revenge. Yeah, revenge but also revenge. you're late, mate. It's been a, it's been forty years. <laughs> yeah, all right. You are late. No, he's just sitting back, being like, well, maybe that helicopter will get him. Mm, that's maybe true. Maybe Russia will get him. You know, it didn't I? Did it? I didn't. That's true. Uh, maybe it did. I didn't finish that movie. But there you go. <laughs> okay, terrific. Mason, John McClane may be back. Go it's on. something that is ending and not back, but it's not ending yet, so it's back. Deadline is saying that Fast and Furious Some is... people say your segues get worse. The <laughs> later who who says that? <laughs> hey, listeners, it's me. I, I say your segues get worse. <laughs> so, as, the, as the night gets later, but I think that, I think that was a good segue, James. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate that. Fast and Furious yes. uh, is going to be coming to an end with movies 10 and 11, directed okay. by Justin Lin, who's directed a bunch of these. Um, so nine is not out yet. They pushed that back, obviously. Yep. Um, they're unsure at this point whether The Rock or Jason Statham will return because they're doing their own spin-off movies. Yep, uh-huh. That being said, I'd imagine they'd probably make it happen for this clearly Avengers Endgame inspired <laughs> yep. wrap up to this series. Oh my God. And by wrap up, I mean like end of a chapter. Do you think, yeah, yeah. Do you think these are, are going to end with with a bang? Do you think it's going to be the, bi- yes. do you think it's going to be the biggest adventures ever? Or yes. do you think it's, okay, well. I think right. it's, I think they're going to go all out. Yeah, right. It is going to be your Avengers Endgame style cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the bad guy turned out to be, doesn't, whoever, they all turned up. Oh, the VCR a, oh, no. fence from the first movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy buying the DVD players. It's like it was me all along. Oh. So who, who can they bring back at this point where they're like, this guy, because they've turned most of them good. Good, yeah, right. Yeah, but there must be someone in there. Uh, what happened to Charlize Theron's character? She's back or good or bad. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, cool. I don't know. Uh, sure well, you know what? Me. They should bring back um, Idris Elba. He'd come back probably. Even though he's a and he's in different movies, doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He'd be well. They'd have to bring. I guess they'd have to put up the whiteboard, and they'd have to put up every villain that hasn't died in any of these. Yeah. And do you think they'd do like a triple X crossover with Vin Diesel also? Double Vin Diesel, double Diesel, double Diesel, double Diesel. Loving that. Yeah. No, I don't. No, I don't think. No, honestly, I don't think they would either. Um. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Is. This the fir- would will this be the first franchise? No, Mason, it won't be the first franchise. <laughs> Turn it back on me. Doing that like joke it. that the, everybody that I do. <laughs> gets sick of, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> do you think is this the first franchise that'll get up to movie number eleven and they'll put eleven in the title? Because it's not the first eleventh movie oh, in a franchise. Because okay. there's been Bond movies and that yeah, sort of I see stuff. What you're saying. But imagine just just imagine going to the cinema for Fast and Furious eleven. Well, they're not all numbered. Yeah, that's so true. So Fast 9 is Fast 9. Is Jason X, speaking of the Jason movies, sure. is Jason X the 10th Jason movie? I think it movie? might be, but. Okay. No, 11, except for Ocean's 11, which yeah. is the, canonically the 11th Ocean's movie. Well, that's true. Mm. But also Jason X, um, it might not be the 10th movie. <laughs> that's, yes. I mean, it probably is. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Uh, mm. So I don't I don't think they'll give it numbers. I think it'll be like Infinity War and Game, name it. Yep. I think that's what it'll be, but I don't know. So fantastic, uh, Fast and Furious, Infinity War, Fast and Furious, Endgame. Exactly. Nice. Why wouldn't you? Who's going to wield the hammer? Vin Diesel. Mm, but The Rock maybe because they've got beef. They do it together. <laughs> they lift it together. Yeah. Mm. They squash that beef and then they lift it together. They wouldn't get him on set And The together. Rock's holding up the, the hammer and Vin Diesel's underneath and he's being lifted up in the air. <laughs> he wouldn't do that, Mason. No, he wouldn't do it. That's true. <laughs> They'd have to be a line where they explain they're both of equal height. <laughs> They have to put the dialogue in like a, a bystander's like, they're both as tall yeah, as each exactly. other and they're both as good at fighting. And then it will flash to mug shots and they're both six foot four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. Uh, Snyder Cut News. Yes. This is via Collider. A couple of things. Joe Manganello will return as Deathstroke. Mm-hmm. Now, if you remember, he was in the original, sorry, the Joss Whedon cut yes. in a weird wig at the like end on a boat. 30 seconds, yeah. But also he filmed another post credits prior to that, oh. which presumably I guess they're doing different stuff with him, which could be a different post credits. Also, this is now four hours long, so yeah, sure there's more content for it. Yeah, yep. And on top of that, the Hollywood Reporter have said that Jared Leto is returning yep. as the Joker that everybody hates yep, in their right. heart. Mm-hmm. Um, the worst one. That's right. That being said, again, as I said in the video that I made years ago about is he the worst, there's not enough of him to be like, yeah, this is – I didn't really – Oh, I thought you meant is he the worst actor. No, he's like not personally. the worst actor. No, I mean oh, pers- like as a person probably. <laughs> but um, is he the worst Joker? 
I mean, judged on like what we've seen of him, mm. yes. Yeah. But with more, maybe who knows? Maybe, we don't know. Not, yeah. Mm-hmm. David Ayer was talking this week about how he's got his Suicide Squad cunt. People are going to shit bricks. It's incredible. But who knows where that is at this point in time? But um, so this is going beyond just the Snyder cut. It yeah. has to for this four is, hours. Yeah, there's got to be point. new so, stuff in yeah. here. And I know some people don't like hearing that, how it's his original vision and whatever, uh-huh. but it's clearly got to the point the where... The truth hurts sometimes. Yeah. Well, I, I think this is a good thing, though, because exp- he can expand on what he wants to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for good or ill, this is it's his. Yeah. It's four hours of it's this. It's probably $600 million <laughs> at this point. Uh, $70 million, apparently. Okay. That's the idea. So, but, you know... I meant total cost. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yep. That sounds about right. Mm. But, you know, uh, it's it's makes sense, I guess, because you need content for your HBO you Max and yeah, whatever and right. you got most of this sitting here. And I, I guess mean, they could knock out another season of Harley Quinn if they wanted to. They, well, they are. They're doing that. Good, good. But uh, the other thing is $70 million for a TV show of this calibre I guess isn't that much when you consider that's who's true, yeah. involved in the spectacle of it or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's, of course, if you... Discount everything. That, yeah, that came and you before. discount the fact that honestly, you know, unlike a TV series, a lot of this will be like, I know what's going to happen in this. this I, yeah. I'm not going to be that surprised, maybe. honestly. You know, we don't. Yeah, maybe. Like, imagine if you watched a, if you watched a, a full season of say, say Westworld, one of our TV series. Yeah, that we like. Uh, and and every episode, you're like, I know at least fifty percent of what's going to happen here. Oh, cool. That'd okay. be a, that'd be a bad TV watching experience. Yeah, you're right? probably right. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Mm. I'm 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 interested in. Um, we can all shut up about it when it's done, but but we won't. Hap- we can't. We won't because then there'll be the fan petitions to get him to come back, and there'll be two universes and whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, last bit of news. I don't I'm know ready. why I put this here, but okay. Um, ben Wheatley is a director, and he's going to be directing The Meg Two. It's based on the book The Meg the Trench. Uh, is so it really? I looked into it. Huh. The first one is. No, no. The second one is called The, oh. the Meg Colon the Trench. Okay. Uh, the book continues the adventures of the of, Meg. Of, no, Mason. Aww. The Meg was exploded oh. or not. <laughs> I don't remember. It probably there were the two, was. There were two The Megs. There were two The Megs. Spoilers for the movie The Meg. If for some reason, the, if for some reason, if you're the kind of person who watches movies like The Meg, yeah. and for some reason during quarantine and lockdown you haven't gotten to The Meg yet, and you're mad mm. that we're spoiling The Meg, a movie that came out years ago at this point. Last year, maybe. I don't know. There Doesn't, were t- know. there were two The Megs. There were two The Megs. One was a bigger The Meg. One was a bigger The Meg, right? <laughs> the bigger The Meg. The I remember harder thinking Meg. at the time, this is The Meg they've caught isn't that big of The Meg, and then I'm like, <laughs> ah, there's a bigger The Meg. They got me. So. The book continues the adventure of Jonas Taylor, who was probably Statham's character, mm. uh, a paleo, 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 paleobiologist <laughs> studying the megalodon yes. who discovers another. How did you get megalodon correct but not paleobiologist? <laughs> because I read a lot of dinosaur and shark books. With I my guess son, you probably Mason, do. That's true, yeah. Uh, who discovers another prehistoric monster, the Chronosaurus. Ooh. Have you seen that one? It's like a big, it's got flippers and it's kind of like a crocodile you can mouth. travel through time? I don't think it does. Well, there's a hit. There's a there's a hint for you, folks. Make uh, no doubt. Movie. Yeah. So time travel. Are you excited for more the Meg? Nope. Or a Chronosaurus or whatever is happening here. Nope. nope what nope. about Chronosaurus versus Meg? Two the Megs. <laughs> oh, that's not bad actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't think they're going to get the Meg to fight the Chronosaurus? Well, I mean, they did explode the Meg, so. Yeah, but we, we, another, if we recall. You don't think there's going to be another the Meg? Maybe they'll fire chunks of the Meg at the Chronosaurus. That's how you get them. Because yeah, only the Meg can penetrate the Chronosaurus. Precisely, that's right. They figure it out. There's a special... Only the Meg can... <laughs> <laughs> there's a special type of ore in the... There's in a the special Meg. type of ore. <laughs> but, oh, no, that's confusing because they'd think of ore like a, oh. like a boat's ore. They're like boat's alloy. ore? And he's like, no, like an alloy. <laughs> nice, good, good, yeah. good. Anyway... You're welcome. I'm a paleobiologist. <laughs> You're welcome once again. I'm six and, four or so. <laughs> another another movie studio. He's we've not. Written, he's like five we've, six. We've written your movie for you. So <laughs> we've got to fire the Meg, the Chronosaurus. <laughs> Maybe we'll wait if he's going to come to us. We'll make him come to us. That's right. They always make him come and, to us. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And maybe they've like they have to load the Meg into like an old timey <laughs> pirate cannon, like bits of the Meg. Because they're trapped. They've, they've uncovered a pirate ship. We've only got one shot of this. We've only got so much Meg to go around. <laughs> oh, this we found this pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even how he sounds, but it's how, it sounds in our, how he sounds in our hearts. It's how he sounds. Yeah, you're right. 
Oh, goodness. But it also, like, you have to imagine his face when he's saying, <laughs> yeah. like, that bug-eyed look he's got sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Just all the veins in his yeah. head pulsing, yeah. He's a very serious man. That's why I like him. Mason. I've covered myself in the Meg guts. <laughs> Crocosaurus <laughs> can't find me. <laughs> That's what been the opposite. There's an alloy. Oh, yeah. There's an alloy. <laughs> we, should do, we should do these all late. Yeah. I don't know whether this is good, but I'm having a good time. <laughs> I only like uh, convenient delivery to my doorstep, Mason. Not inconvenient deliveries. Absolutely. And HelloFresh is all about that. They bring it right to your door for easy home cooking with family, friends, by yourself, whatever you got going on, mate. Make a family's worth of food, eat it all yourself. That's what I like to do. Exactly. The recipes are easy to follow and they're quick to make with simple steps and pictures to guide you along the way. That's very helpful. It's so helpful. Often I get lost and I'm like, where am I? Sometimes and then, they're like quarter an onion and I'm like, what does that mean? Cool. Oh, into four. I send a picture. <laughs> I just think like four horses pulling apart an onion. You know Perfect, what I mean? yeah, medieval style. Yeah, that's I like it. it, yeah. But the pictures probably recommend another way of doing that. I assume. Yeah, yeah. probably donkeys. <laughs> so it's also great value. You save 40% off when you use HelloFresh versus shopping at the grocery store and they deliver fresh, high-quality, pre-proportioned ingredients so you can make meals that are delicious and nutritious and over 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure peak flavor and ripeness. Very nice. That's what you want, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And also by skipping the grocery store and using HelloFresh, you're reducing your food waste by 25% at least. Nice. HelloFresh is the first Global Carbon Neutral Meal Kit Company. They're ticking all the boxes, these guys. I completely agree. And if you want a personal endorsement, which I know I do, I've got one. From you. I'm going to give it to me. Oh, nice. And anyone else who wants to listen, they can, obviously. uh But the rosemary and parmesan crumbed chicken burger with cos lettuce, salad and mayo, really easy to follow, delicious. People are going to bloody love it, mate. I tell you that much. Oh, and it's cheesy crumbed. Cheesy crumbed, mate. Oh, my goodness. You can actually go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyPlanet90, as in Nino, and use the code WeeklyPlanet90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyPlanet90, and use code WeeklyPlanet90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. So many free meals. Yes, I agree. And that's yeah. good. I on think with, it is good. On with the show. On with the show. Now, in, um, it's when, when the spooky season rolls around, I'm not talking about tax time, um, often... Uh, you know, podcasts or YouTube channels or, mm-hmm. like, people on Twitter will change their handle. They'll do, like, it's Schlocktober. Nice. It's it's Boo but in October. Nice. Uh, so we need a name. I propose Ox Spook Scare to Boo. To Boo? <laughs> does that work? Yeah, of course it does. Or something like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. they're all taken. But, but can you do that stumble every time we explain Ox Spook it? Scare to Boo? <laughs> that doesn't work. It doesn't, I don't like it as much. Okay, fine. What do we need? We need something. No, I like that. I think okay. it's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm not going to remember that. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so we're going to do. What, what, are we, what are we talking, Mason? I know we talked about it up top. But oh, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about um, TV shows and movies, as we often do. That's right. On it's the podcast. Spook scare too boo already. <laughs> <laughs> but this time around, we're going to talk about the most cursed productions of all time. Exactly. Hollywood curses. I looked through this list though, and it's like some of these are just like <laughs> some of these are incredible. <laughs> like you know, it's uh, with the, the first. I'm like you know, I I'm aware of some because uh, Shudder. I don't know if you're aware of the streaming. I love service, Shudder. They yeah. did a series called Cursed Films where they talk about a oh. five. Just just you know, they talk about five cursed films. Mm. What I'm saying is, yeah. they've they've really gone in depth. But when I first looked this up, I'm like, some of these are like. The Seinfeld curse, like what you what you what you yeah. look in what yeah. you look into when you, when you start looking into this, you sort of discover that people are very and I understand the impetus. Like people are very keen to put a curse on almost anything, yeah, exactly. or ascribe almost anything to a, a a curse to you know anything. They're like, oh my god, the Seinfeld curse. After Seinfeld, none of the main cast had a successful you know uh, next project. Until uh, until they did. <laughs> until they, all they did. did. A lot of them did. They all did. like the the they. they Clearly, like two years passed, and they went. Yeah. These people are all cursed. They've all had sitcoms, and none of them worked. Veep, <laughs> Veep, and uh, New Adventures of Old Christine. They yeah, went for exactly. A while. A bunch and of stuff. obviously, um, you know, Seinfeld makes a hundred million dollars a year in uh, syndication rights. He gets in a car with an old comedian, and they go, "I tell you what, they don't do comedy like we kids used these to days." Do it you know, and, and obviously like, they did so that. True, and Jerry. Jason Alexander, obviously Duckman, Duckman, yeah. And Michael Richards had got to scream the N word at a. <laughs> <laughs> Which was his dream. Yeah, that's right, at a comedy club. Yeah. We all got caught on video. It's not my dream. So it's not really but, a uh, curse at all. No. 
So yeah, that was a, I saw that one on the list because we're actually we've gone to TVTropes.org, mm. which by the way, we should do this every week whenever <laughs> right. we need a list. This is the most extensive thing I've ever seen. That's right. I noticed one of the first ones they mentioned here is the Superman curse, which people yeah. uh, would think is I mean, that ranges from like George Reeve was murdered and found in some Yeah, well, well that's the thing, you're right. It's not it's not just like soup the the Christopher Reeve Superman, yeah. but although that that is true, but yeah, George Reeves uh yeah, he he died. And they're like, it was like suspicious circumstance. I'm like, yeah, he was shot. That's pretty fucking suspicious. <laughs> yeah. I would say. Yeah. But then they also, I mean, this doesn't say it here, but I know people have talked about like, and Brandon Routh never did another movie. It's like, he's fine. <laughs> yeah. He's absolutely okay. He's doing okay. Maybe he's the good. curse is lessening over time because death, paraplegic, which is fucking horrible. Mm. And then Brandon Routh's acting career took a little bit of a hit yeah. for like a minute. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the next person, who knows? Mm. Nothing, I'd imagine. Yeah. So, yeah, Henry Cavill, he's fine. <laughs> he's on The Witcher. <laughs> yeah. So, he's building PCs yeah. in his spare time. But they also talk about Margot Kidder. Uh, they talk about, like, well, she had extreme mental, like, mental illness. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, as a res- not as a result, but, like, like that is, this isn't a curse. But also Margot Kidder has said mm. uh, that for her, she, you may as well say it's the Superman blessing because apparently one night she was in a car accident yeah. and she was, like, five feet away from veering off a cliff and she didn't. And so she's like, well, you know. Guess it works the other way around too, mm. because I well, didn't go, die yeah. from. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's a good point. Cop that. Cop that. I mean, I think she she has passed since. Yeah. But also, yes. uh, just FYI, uh, uh, by the final season of Seinfeld, all the other cast members were making six hundred thousand dollars an episode. So, yeah, I think probably, they're going to be all right. I think they're going to be okay. Still, okay, yeah. terrific stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I've got a list of here of TV shows and movies that we're going to kind of skip around. Okay. Skip, skip, and skip over if they're not interesting. Totally. Yeah. Do you want to do Bewitched? Okay, it's sure. A, it's the spookiest season of the yeah, year, yeah, Mason. Yeah. I'm not Two Darrens. Two Darrens. Well, it says all three lead actors went on to die in their early 60s. Two out of three. I shouldn't laugh there, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a very old show. It's a very old show. So yeah. two of the three of them had cancer. They were all heavy smokers. So is right. that a curse or you just smoked for a really long time? Mm. Uh, first came the two Darren actors, Dick York in 1992 from Emphysema, age 63. Uh, his replacement, Dick Sargent, in 1994 from prostate cancer, and Samantha, uh, actress Elizabeth Montgomery from colon cancer, age 62. So, I don't know, again, like, is it a curse? I mean, it's bad. Sure. And it's a supernatural show, and that's often how they're, you know. But sometimes they're not. Some, like, this one is just like a list of people from Power Rangers who died, and it's very long. Because there's been 900,000 900, cast members. There's been cast members in Power Rangers. But, but I mean, yeah. one did kill his roommate with a sword, if you recall. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> is that a curse? <laughs> is this going to be the same? Was it a cursed sword? They didn't mention whether it's a cursed what sword. What we should do is we should have to, have, we should have to determine with each, each of if these. If it has a cursed sword? Yes. Or what's the cursed item? In oh, the, okay. You know, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Probably Elizabeth Montgomery's cursed nose. She was oh, always going was like... W- little, wiggling little, about. Little, little, little. Do you think any of the people who started in the Bewitched reboot uh, suffered? Who was in the Bewitched Will reboot? Will Ferrell and Nicole Kidman. Was that a thing? Yeah, in like 2006 maybe. Wow. Yeah. You a huh. fan? No. Yeah, it wasn't very good. <laughs> it was also set in the real world where they were rebooting Bewitched. And Nicole, oh. Cad- Nicole Kidman, mm-hmm. why is that hard to say? Uh, she was a real witch. Okay. And is now, she the witch from the TV series? No. Okay, right. She's an independent witch independent of that witch. show. <laughs> okay. And so we're gets, gonna call it independent witch. Yeah, and they hired her to be in the show. Oh, not knowing she was magic? Or yeah. knowing she was magic. Not knowing. And then they're oh. like, You're a real witch. And she's like, straight up, it's true. Nice. I haven't finished it, but it's not a good movie. <laughs> I like to think that it's just on your Netflix queue. It's definitely You're like not. I haven't finished it, but I'm going to. <laughs> I will. I do, I do it a minute at a time because I don't want to. I don't want the magic to of Bewitched to ever end. Oh, absolutely not. That 2005. Sorry, I knew it was around that era. So, and that was also disappointing because that was the era when he's doing like Anchorman and all that stuff. So it's like Will Ferrell com- comedy. These always hit. Not that one. What have you got though, as far as curses oh, go? Oh, what about Brandon Lee? And Bruce Lee, for that matter. Yeah, okay. See, that yeah. hits people hard and people are like, well. Hits them hard, got- hits them fast, like this- a Brandon or Bruce Lee. Yeah, That's exactly right. Mm. Rapid Fire. Yeah. Same with one of the movies. That's right. Yeah, Brandon Lee, Rapid Fire. Who's in it with him? Doesn't I matter. Know, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't, matter. Doesn't matter. But anyway, they both died under mysterious circumstances. That's right. Uh, Bruce Lee had, did he have an aneurysm? He had a brain aneurysm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And Brandon Lee was obviously killed in an on- onset accident where a gun that was supposed to be blank. Uh, was not blank. Was not blank or was, but. There was Find a malfunction a in it yeah, and, and yeah, he, yeah, ended right. up, he ended up being killed. Should we look into it slightly more? 
I mean, that's what happened. Yeah, well, that is true. Yeah. Yes. But like, I know people have made like the argument of like, why would Bruce Lee die? Because he was incredibly healthy or whatever. But often with you know brain aneurysms, it doesn't matter. That you know, is true. Yeah. Could, they can just hit you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not sure what led to that in particular, but yeah. So I don't know if this is a curse, but it's certainly what's cursed? Fists? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, the fists. The fists. Okay. <laughs> cursed fists. There you go. But anyway, at least they brought back. Bruce Lee for a Mars bar commercial or something. And then more recently a vodka commercial. Really? Two things that Bruce Lee notoriously loved. Wow. Mars bars and vodka. <laughs> he loved a Mars bar so good <laughs> vodka. That's what he loved. <laughs> he couldn't get enough. So there you bloody go. Put it up his butt. Did he? Yeah. Just to yeah. get the full, the full Yeah. The full experience. Both of them also had movies that were released post their death. Uh yeah. one of which, the Bruce Lee version, was a horrible like misuse of his footage, they'd barely shot any of it. There's a moment yeah, yeah. where the the double is sitting in front of a mirror and they've they've stuck on a cardboard Bruce Lee face onto the mirror. Oh yeah, right. So like a, I was gonna say it looks like he's there. It obviously doesn't. Uh-huh. But and they just used old footage and also had that a stunt double who looked nothing like him in a mm. wig and sunglasses. And of course, Brandon Lee, they managed to finish the crow because they'd shot most of it and they filled the rest in with like you know CGI and whatnot to make that movie actually come together in a way that makes sense. So that's cool, I think, and Cursed Fists. <laughs> this one, I, I'm sure you've seen this, but this one I find fascinating, but it's a different kind of curse. Okay. It's for Blade Runner. Yes. And you might be like, what's the cursing thing about Blade Runner? The fact that the movies never do well? <laughs> yes, you're correct. But it's a brand curse. Oh, because all the brands that are in Blade Runner yes. have, have since gone out of business, right? That's Atari right. went out of business. So yeah, it's a tar- Coca Cola famously went out of business. Well, here's the thing: Apple computers, well, Microsoft, they, Facebook. They, d- they all went out of business. <laughs> well, the Coca Cola one you mentioned. No, I'm just making these up. No, that's true. Oh. but Coca Cola dipped new because Coke? of New Coke. Right. Yeah. So another thing was, uh, yeah. So Atari was uh, involved in the great video game crash, and, that's and true. it never fully recovered. Yeah, it's not really a thing. It's more. It's more yeah. a logo for t-shirts now. Yeah, you buy and they sell old consoles though. that people don't really yeah, want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bell was broken up. Uh, Cuisinart would go bankrupt in 1989 mm-hmm. and acquired by Conair Corporation. Mm-hmm. Pan American. That's like it's like a blender. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cuisinart Pan- is a blender. I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Uh, what's it called? Cuisinart. Cuisinart. Why is it with a C then? I don't know. Boo! I say. That's why it didn't do well. That's right. Pan that Amer- was just the ad. How do we pronounce this? We don't know, but you should buy it, I guess. <laughs> Look. It's blending. It's bl- Look. It's, it's great. We love it. Yeah. You obviously don't. Um, and as an eerie coincidence, it says, Rutger Hauer, who played Roy Batty, would die in 2019, the same year that he died when the original movie was set. Oh. I don't think that's a curse. I think that's just a thing that happened. So it's like a series of brands. Oh, we should determine whether <laughs> something is a curse or just a thing that happened. Yeah. We should give definitive rankings. Yeah, but the th- thing about this one is it's like the curse is a series of brands that went under or bounced back yes. and a guy died. Right. Like, the, come on. What <laughs> no, are I'm doing seeing here? a fairly consistent through line there. <laughs> Rutger Hauer isn't a brand. He's a man. Mm, that's true. Yeah, and apparently a very nice man by all accounts. Our friend Hollywood Pete met him. Oh. Said he was fucking awesome. And he loved to answer Blade Runner questions. Yeah, he was right? like, I'll talk about Blade Runner all day. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. Because often people are like, I don't want to talk about Blade Runner. Harrison Ford. <laughs> that's that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Sure, right. In particular. I imagine most stars in Hollywood probably want to talk about Blade Runner. Do you think? Yeah, because they love film. I'm sure directors do as well. Yeah, they Directors would. who didn't direct Blade Runner, they want to talk about how much of it influences them on them, whatever, <laughs> and what their <laughs> favourite cut is. And yeah, what of they course. Think yeah, his yeah, deck yeah, could yeah. really replicate. And you're like, and God, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. We don't care about your bloody remake of Ghost in the Shell or <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean, Mason. Yeah, I know what you mean, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you got, though? Here's one. I didn't. This is new to me. All right. uh, the, the Passion of the Christ is apparently cursed. Not monetarily. No, it, it did well. so much But money. it's because uh, Jim Caviziel, who played Jesus Christ, yes. our Lord and Saviour, and assistant director Jan Michelini were both struck by lightning. I did hear that. <laughs> For Michelini, it was the second time he'd been struck during production. <laughs> He was struck by lightning twice. twice. His life. No, twice in <laughs> twice in the one shooting. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my, like, were they filming on top of a hill? Yeah, they were filming on. Were there what metal get... rods in the cross? No, this was the Sermon on the Mount scenario. So he's not even been crucified at this point. Oh, really? He's playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> Regular golf Bible? or yeah. like. Bible era golf. Ninja golf. You remember Ninja, the Atari okay. game? Ninja Have you golf. seen that new Australian show? It's called Get It Holy Moly. Have you seen the ad for that? Nope. 
The grand final was this week. It's the reality show. Yes. Well, the grand final was this week in Australia, which is like it's a big sport game. It's like the Super Bowl, but it's not like Super good. Bowl, but yeah. So uh, there's commercials, mm-hmm. and because my son was watching it as well, and a commercial started, and he's like, "What? Is, what is this?" Oh, because he's never he's seen never it seen, but I'm like. Oh, it's like, okay, it's like a thing. It was like a plant or something. It's like a thing that they show you and then it's like if you want to want to buy it. And he's uh-huh. like, I don't want to buy this. And I'm like, yeah, no one does. No one does. This, this, these actually don't work. The system is failing, yeah. <laughs> it's astounding it's lasted this long. Yeah. Anyway, my point was, mm-hmm. what were we talking about? The Sermon on the Mount. No, Golf. Holy Moly. I saw oh, yes. an ad for Holy Moly, which is like Wipeout but Miniature Golf. Okay, sure. So and you have to play golf while people are pushing you off things. Pretty much. And it was uh, it was Matt Shervington. And if, a any, vi- if any production's going to be cursed, it's holy moly. <laughs> it was Matt Shervington and the other host really surprised me. Matt Shervington is an is a athlete of some sort. Yeah, he was a runner. Okay. He was an Olympic sprinter. This is incredible. Uh, it is. It's going to blow your mind. Okay. Rob Riggle. It's Matt Shervington and Rob <laughs> Riggle. American actor Rob Riggle. Yep. Because that happens every now and then they'll fly somebody in and they'll be like, Jason Derulo's on The Voice, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, right, right. So that's how that goes. Anyway, what Rob were you saying? Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle. Mm. What were you saying before I cut you off? The Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. They both got lightning, lightning bolted. Did anything else happen in that? Nope, just that. That's just lightning strikes. I mean, Mel Gibson. Yeah, Mel Gibson. Was, I imagine the item that was cursed was Mel Gibson. Oh, well, my understanding is the funding of that, nobody wanted to fund it, mm. so he funded it himself, right. and then it made like half a billion dollars. Yeah, so he's it made him fine. very rich. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of... There's... But that's made him a bad person. I think he was already. It's made him a worse person. Okay, then. Yep. <laughs> this one to me is fascinating, Go and I, I read this before the show, and I'm like, whoa, never heard of it, but whoa. Go it's, on. It, and it's not a curse, and you'll see why. Okay. It's just a series of horrible things that happened. Go on. Uh, it's called The Conqueror which was a movie with John Wayne. Uh, it says, most notably, superbly mis- miscast. So I think it's the one where he plays Genghis Khan, Khan yeah. <laughs> if I had to uh, yeah. guess, which it is. So everybody who worked on this would, was diagnosed with cancers and leukemia until somebody pointed out that the – well, not everybody, but a bunch of people – the common link to the film uh, that was realised because it was shot in the deserts of southern Utah and not far away and, more importantly, downed, downwind oh, I I can guess what this from is. a nuclear test site yeah, in wow. Nevada. Wow. Even worse, they trucked radioactive dirt from the desert back to Hollywood to finish off the sets they were building. Wow. To keep, you know, to keep yeah. the continuity. Yeah. The clusters of cancers uh, was due to having lived and worked on the film set where the fallout was the densest. Uh, uh, this is unique. This is unique. It's, well, yeah, it is. And caused the curse 30 years on. Uh, so it's not a curse. It's they all got radiation <laughs> poisoning. poisoning. Wow. So there you go. But in this instance, the cursed item, obviously John Wayne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. his fault. The draft dodging. You, d- you don't think it's the dirt? <laughs> no, nope, it's John Wayne. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We talked about that recently in... The first dread we did, for maybe, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, this week we're doing bloody Star Wars stuff, aren't we? We did some more stuff, Karen. Yeah. Karen that's I think part, part, most of this episode is is it's le- it's going to be less curses and more just horrible bad luck on on uh, yeah. movie sets. Absolutely. What else we got? Uh, how about the Omen? 1976, oh, yeah, okay. The Omen. Okay, here, how about this? Speaking of lightning, the scriptwriter's plane was hit by lightning. Okay. So so was Gregory Peck's. Plane was struck by lightning as I guess they were flying in, as was the executive producer's plane. Oh, my goodness. Three lightning strikes on three planes. But, I mean, I guess that's my, that's my, that makes me wonder, how often are planes struck by lightning? That's a great question. Like maybe the, maybe every time you get on a plane they get struck by lightning. Yeah, you might be right. And it just, I mean, you, and it just grounds out somehow or dissipates. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, the producer's, Mace Newfield, great name. That's that's Quite, a great name. Quietly, a hotel he was staying at during production was bombed by the IRA. Oh my god! As was a restaurant the director and the actors were scheduled to eat at. Uh, one of the film's tiger handlers died from the tigers. Doesn't say. <laughs> I think uh, Gregory kind of... Peck's son shot himself. Whoa. Uh, a plane scheduled for use in the film, which was rescheduled and used for a commercial flight, instead crashed and killed everyone on board after it was struck by lightning. Presumably, yeah. uh, as they all are. An assistant to special effects consultant John Richardson on Friday the 13th crashed his car in Holland. His assistant was sliced through by the car's front wheel. Scrambling out of the wreckage, Richardson looked up and saw a road sign, Omen, 66.6 kilometres away. It's wild stuff. What was cursed? Um, Probably Gregory Peck. Maybe the lightning. Maybe the lightning, I guess. Gregory yeah. Peck, you think? Yeah, probably Gregory okay, Peck. Yeah, Definitively yeah. it was Gregory Peck. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, Man, yeah, yeah. that's that's... I know The Exorcist has like a similar like list of things that happened, yeah. which I can go to. 
Uh, again, trouble production. People felt that the devil himself must have must have uh, inflicted oh, these yes. kinds of damages. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Aileen Burstron suffered a lifelong crippling spinal injury when a special effects. Are you start- saying Ellen Burstyn? What, are what you did doing I say? Burstyn. Burstyn. Ellen Burstyn. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's late, Mason. I, I know. can't read, and I probably need glasses. <laughs> Almost probably. certainly, yeah. So uh, that would mean you are farsighted. I don't know. Okay. I can actually see this fine. Okay then. But my eyes, my eyes do hurt because I'm not wearing my bloody blue bloody. Oh, blue I been putting yeah, them on. Yeah, they yeah, really yeah. help. Uh, the wire she was on, uh, was to, which was to uh, stimulate simulate her possessed daughter, threw her across the room at uh, ten times the expected force, badly injuring her back. Linda Blair went on to develop mental illnesses, which some people thought was a result of um, demonic, demonic possess, uh, possession. So there was a Roman Catholic priest who was on set as actors like a chaplain and counsellor. Uh-huh. So... He, he talked about how there was very, very much fear on set from the cast and crew about the subject matter. Uh, that's not really like a curse. That's like a guy going spooky things. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, so J- Jason Miller, who played the exorcist father, the, the father Karras, lived in a Jesuit seminary uh, while uh, to totally immerse himself in the role. And they gave him a protect- protective amulet because bad there was trouble ahead. And two days later, Miller's elder son was critically injured in a road accident. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a series of kind of things like that. And they talk about it. even the sequels had their problems or whatever. So mm. there you bloody go, mate. It's just like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of these are production troubles, though. <laughs> I mean, Well, that's what this, James, we don't, there's no definitive, uh, until we title this episode, mm. uh, there's no way of saying that's wrong. Yeah, that's so, right, yeah. <laughs> it's cursed film slash production bad troubles. production. Production Ooh. troubles, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing, and tell me if this is a curse. Okay. Uh, the film Atuk. A comedy about a, a, uh, an Inuit mm. emigrating to New York never got finished because John Belushi died of a drug overdose shortly after reading the script. Sam Kinison was cast next. He died in a car crash. John Candy took the role, died of a heart attack. Yep. Chris Farley opened talks to play the lead and died at, uh, from a drug overdose. This is in a pretty short window as well. Yeah, All those guys. Right? You know, oh, no, Belushi was the 80s, wasn't he? Yeah, yep. but, yeah right. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but also there's a lot of movies where – like a series of people don't die and then they make the movie. That's true, So yeah. I think like it's really it's like a numbers game. In a way, yes. And that often doesn't happen. Uh-huh. But also it's probably a curse and whatever. I think it's definitely a curse. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Speaking of horror movies though, Rosemary's Baby from 1968, the first point here is Roman Polanski's career suffered a personal nosedive after making this movie. Because he's a pedophile. Because he's a pedophile and he yeah. had to flee to France and he still hasn't had any comeuppance for that thing that yeah. he did. Mm-hmm. So that's probably part of it. Uh, but he did, of Do course. Do you think the cursed object is Roman Polanski, the pedophile? Yes. Yeah, I think so too. It says too. he escaped the massacre on his wife, uh, Sharon Tate, which of course we recently saw in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood mm-hmm. uh, and five others because he was in London at the time. Uh, the film's, film's composer died of a, bra- a brain clot one year after making the film. Producer William Castle nearly died of kid- kidney failure shortly after the film was completed. Uh, and he was heard reciting uh, lines from the movie while in uh, a near-death uh, coma. Such as, for God's sake, Rosemary, drop that knife. Oh, yeah! Wow. Maybe he was just talking about the surgery. For God's sakes, Rosemary, that's Rosemary's baby you're holding there. <laughs> don't they you? Had it. They had it don't you know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, baby, that's Rosemary's baby, baby. <laughs> yeah. What else we got? Ooh, Fantastic Four. There's a Fantastic Four curse, James. Isn't this just a series of movies that didn't happen, all yeah, were bad? And were bad. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Roger Corman film was set for a 1994 release, but Constantine Films uh, viewed it as an Ashcan copy and never released it. Oh. Not a curse, just a bad movie, and they did it for for um, weird financial contractual reasons. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's why. Uh, the 2005 film and its sequel were both panned by critics. Yeah, they were bad. They were bad. They were bad movies. And they made money? Not a curse. <laughs> and they just, made money. Just bad movies. Yeah. The 2015 <laughs> film fed worst of all being yet another glorified ash can copy. That's the copyright thing. Sure. Uh, affected by executive meddling, marred by director Josh Trank's erratic behaviour causing him to get fired from several projects he was previously attached to. It received worse reviews than any of the aforementioned Fantastic Four movies. It's a yep. bad movie. Yeah. It's not a good movie. What's the curse? Simon Kinberg. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is true. Or maybe not. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Probably, though. No, that's just. Yeah. Just, they didn't. Make, they haven't made a good one yet. Mm, that's true. Because you could be like, well, Dreads a curse because the first one was bad and the second one didn't make money. Oh, do you think we could start one? 
you think we should come up with our own? Dread be cursed. Our own curse this time around. That's a great idea. It's cursed. While we're thinking of the one, I've got one here. Okay, go on. Which I think is just an onset accident. Okay. It's from The Return of the Musketeer in 1988. Our British character actor Roy Kinnear was fatally injured on set when a f- formerly placid horse he was riding, one sort suitable for the actor, uh, became uncontrollably wild and galloped away, eventually bucking, eventually. I imagine this is like, how long is he on the horse for? Like an hour and a half? Right. Uh, eventually bucking him off into a wall. Oh. He died a day later from complications to a broken pelvis. Wow. So that's unusual, maybe? Very. Yeah. Uh, good. He's per- pel- cursed pelvis. Cursed pelvis, yeah. Can his family successfully sued? Yep. Uh, for, for negligence, director Richard Lester was so shaken from the incident. Uh, he directed Superman 3 and um, other movies. He's like, oh, it's another bloody curse. <laughs> he worked uh, many times with Kinnear and considered him a friend uh, that he retired prematurely from the film business despite a series of successes. Yeah, that would make sense because yeah. that, be, that would be very traumatising. Uh, is he related to Rory Kinnear in any way? I do not know. Let me find out for you. Please. Uh, Roy Kinnear? Roy Kinnear. I know this guy. Yeah, children. Rory Kinnear. There you go. Yeah, he's from like the Black Mirror one, the worst one. Not the worst, but like the most traumatic. It's a pig one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's in, the, oh, he's in Bond movies this. also. Yeah, he's in Bond movies, but that's what I remember from. Okay, cool. Yeah, I totally remember Roy Kinnear. Yeah. I remember from a bunch of stuff. Mm. But this, James? I'm ready. Do you remember the movie Raw? No. It's got Melanie Griffith. I do know it. this one. You're- this is just poor... Management of a movie. Yeah, this is a movie Didn't, from the eighties. Did they want to do an episode of this as well? I think they did. Yeah. yeah, but I've always loved the just the idea of it. It's about a naturalist who lives in a nature preserve in Africa with lions and tigers and etc. Yes, and his family visit him and they're confronted by the animals. Like seventy people were horribly injured. Yeah, during absolutely. the production yeah. of it, including like many of the stars. There was a flood. It destroyed most of the set, apparently. Okay, yep. Uh, and it's just the, the best, I think. It's just the, it's just the best, It was just it? the best, yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, people got mauled a lot, didn't they? The family sold their houses to pay for the production of it because they had to feed all the animals and it cost like like thousands of dollars a week. Some Tiger King shit going on here. Yeah, yeah. Well, much. exactly, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? Not all of it. Me neither. I've seen some of it. I um this is an interesting one that I never thought about, but it makes so much sense. Go on. Most of the role Dahl. Oh, wait, can I just? Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you leave you. I'm gonna Please. give you a list. Uh, of, what's cursed? Um, Melanie Griffiths. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forty eight injuries within two years of the start of filming. So they filmed it over an extraordinarily long time. Well, when you film something for two years and there's a bunch of fucking tigers running yeah, yeah. around, yeah, at least seventy people were injured. Uh, but the uh, John Marshall said that he believed the number of people injured was actually over a hundred. Uh, yeah. Uh, he was bitten through the hand when he interacted with male lines during a fight scene. Through Do- the hand. Through the hand. Doctors initially feared that he might lose his arm. Cursed hand. Uh, yeah. He suffered eight puncture wounds on his leg, who was caused by a lion who was curious about his makeup. Like he had some anti-reflection makeup uh, on him. Okay. To like, you know, for the cameras or whatever, and the, the lion was just like, oh, I'll take a bite out of that. That uh, looks delicious. Uh, uh, he had already been bitten 11 times before that. That's quite a lot uh, of times. His face and chest were injured. He was diagnosed with blood poisoning. He got gangrene. Tippy Hedron was bitten in the head by a line during a promo shoot. In the head. Not yeah. through the head, though, so that's good. Well, the, the teeth scraped against her skull, apparently. Cool, so she's that's got, cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was then admitted to a different hospital after the a five-ton elephant picked her up and fractured her ankle uh, with his trunk before bucking her off his back. She said that he would. He, the elephant had been trying to keep her from falling and was not at fault. Disagree. Uh, oh, you think he did it on purpose? I don't think you, should, elephant? Write, I don't think you should write evil, elephants. Evil elephant. Yeah, well, exactly, right? Yeah. Several days earlier, the elephant had bucked his trainer, who uh, bucked bucked his trainer into a tree and broken a shoulder. Yeah, but it wasn't the elephant's fault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't exactly. Mean, didn't mean Griff- to do Griffith it. Griffiths received fifty stitches after being attacked by a lioness. Was feared she would lose an eye, uh, but she 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 uh, she didn't lose. She an eye. didn't. She's got two eyes still. A lion jumped on John Marshall, bit the back of his head, etc. Have you heard Claire's horrific eye story? What happened to her eye? No. Uh, we'll do it on Suggestible, my less successful Great, podcast. Cool. But, yeah, she had a really horrific eye injury when she was a child. Oh, oh my God. It's fine and yeah, yeah. you wouldn't know and she's, her vision's fine. Oh, except she needs glasses. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, oh, we'll talk about Unsuggestible. Okay, There's do it, for please. Put a sizzle podcast. there for yeah. it. Okay, cool. Uh, message Claire on Twitter um, mm. at Mrs. Sunday Movies. She, she hates that Twitter handle. She's like, why don't I choose this? And I'm like, <laughs> you, you should change it. You be, well, you you better watch out when she does change it. That's right. To Mrs. Mr. Mesa movies. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, this, she'll change it to Mr. Sunday movies. I'm divorcing you. <laughs> and you go, you gotta watch out. 
So this I've never thought about, but it's fascinating. Go on. Most of the Roald Dahl adaptations tank. Right. So there's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That made $25 million. That is one of the exceptions. And also that's obviously grown in cult status over the years. Uh-huh. But there's a bunch of other ones as well that haven't done super well. There was a Danny the Champion of the World adaptation in the 80s with, I think might have been a TV adaptation. I'll check that. Uh, with, um, what's the bad guy from Die Hard 3? Oh, Jeremy Irons. Yeah. Well, it might have been a Italian movie. Yeah, so that was a TV movie, so I guess that uh-huh. doesn't count. But uh, James and the Giant Peach in 1996 made $28 million. The Witches in 1990 made $10 million. Uh, Matilda made $33 million. The BFG, which came out a couple of years. Oh, it's a fantastic Mr. Fox made $46 million. Okay. Uh, the BFG made $64 million, and that was an incredibly expensive Spielberg property, mm. if you remember it. And, of course, The Witches recently went to HBO Max, so that doesn't have a box office. Yeah, right, uh, right. A lot of these are like are good or you know goodish. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the the more recent Charlie and the Chocolate Factory did quite well. That made four hundred seventy five million. So that's like the massive exception. But yeah, it's interesting that a lot of those books are so beloved. But the curse is um, uh, nerds, Johnny Depp. The curse is nerds only love to read. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Thanks for nothing, nerds. Thanks, nerds. God. Yeah. So there you go. Mm. Mm. People, of course, uh, know about the Glee curse. A number of people who have been involved in that have died. I laugh died. there, which is which is sad. But I mean, some some of the some of the elements of the Glee curse are people died of an accidental dr- drug overdose. But one of the elements of the the Glee curse is Leah Michelle would eventually receive accusations that her character's bad attitude was a pretty good reflection of her real life personality. Whoa! What a curse! That's a massive. What a curse cur- for Leah Michelle. Yeah, but she yeah, got perchy side. She got bloody raked recently. Yeah. It says here, Titanic, the 1943 anti-British Nazi Germany propaganda film, had a number of things bad happened after it. But also that came out during World War II and then Germany lost the war. So I'd imagine like a lot of these are like ship-related. They're like, and then this ship sunk and whatever. And it's like, well, yeah, it's (laughs) it's wartime, isn't it? Right. Yeah. This is a good one to end on, Mason. The Wizard of Oz. Uh, Bubby Ebsen. Oh, the, the original Wizard of Oz. Is there another one? Yeah, there's like Return to Oz or whatever. That's, that's it doesn't matter. Oz the Great and Powerful. Yeah, I the saw most that. cursed of all. Uh, Buddy Ebsen, the first actor to cast cast as a Tin Man, was hospitalized after inhaling aluminium powder, aluminum power for our American listeners. <laughs> yes, powder. Sorry, uh, that was used for his makeup, forcing the role to be recast with a safer metallic grease paint. Nice. Which probably also killed him. Uh, both Margaret Hamilton as the Wicked Witch of the West and her stunt double, uh, Betty Danko, were seriously injured in separate accidents involving pyrotechnics used for the witch's appearances and disappearances. That was the time when they were just like, just use a stick of dynamite. Yeah, exactly, right? You know? Yeah. So, you know. So, yeah. uh, four months after the film was released, Frank Morgan, who played the wizard, was involved in a serious car accident. Uh, his chauffeur, house servant, okay, <laughs> was killed in December of 1939, smashed in New Mexico. Uh, smashed in New Mexico, and Frank's wife Alma was injured. Frank and his son George escaped unharmed. Uh, and like Linda Blair, Ju- Judy Garland's post-child star life was plagued with depression, mental illness, and o- other calamities. Some have said the curse even encompassed uh, her daughter Liza Minnelli. Looking at this, though, except for the car accident, this is like they made movies fucking horribly. Yeah, well, in, exactly. Like, yeah. Oh, they still do occasionally, but there's no – regulations for anything. No, exactly, Nobody's right. getting paid. Yeah, All yeah. these people are locked into horrible studio contracts and drugged up. Well, I was going to say, like, Judy Garland. Yeah. Like, I think it's probably, you know, the, they were like, oh, you're feeling a little tired, Judy Garland, because you're a child working on this movie. Here, have some drugs. Yeah, and that's That'll it. pep you right up. So, you know, that's all of this, again, it's like, what's the curse? MGM. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? They, yeah, they're behind a lot of these curses, They I certainly think. are. Wow. So they're sort of out of business, though, aren't they? Yeah, good. You know, they've been ebbing and flowing. What about uh, Bond? Isn't that MGM? Yeah, sort of, but other people own it. And yeah. I don't know who owns MGM. The Broccoli. The, the Broccoli Boys. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, those Broccoli Boys. <laughs> that was Barbara Bro- Broccoli. Yeah, I yeah, point yeah. Out. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the yeah. Broccoli Boys and Big Barb Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> it's the gang. The Broccoli Gang. I just imagine like big like broccoli flapped flat cats. Of course cats, you, you know do. Because I mean? <laughs> that's, that's what why it is. no one takes them seriously. Because <laughs> that's what they are. <laughs> anyway, so I mean, there's others, obviously, yes. but that's some. That's a bunch of them. I feel. Mm. <laughs> I don't feel it is. They're always people are always they they run in fear when the broccoli the broccoli boys show up. They're like, <laughs> we're here and we're steamed. We're steamed broccoli. <laughs> 
That's the worst way to eat broccoli. I, I think raw, raw, raw broccoli is better than steamed broccoli. I think steamed broccoli is very good. I think you can do it another way. You get a little bit of salt and pepper and oil, chuck that in the oven, mate. Oh. It's feeling pretty good about not itself. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. All right, do you know what it's time for then? Oh, is it time for what we're reading? Yeah. And then what we're going to read? Yeah. And then you put in the theme song before yeah. I say anything. That's right. Okay, nice. So I, I, I get it. Here we go. I'm doing the theme. What are we, Westworld? All right, Mason. You son of a bitch. Yeah, thanks. We're in the What We Reading segment That's of the true, show. That's true, yeah. i got a few things. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm back on the Discovery train, the Star Trek Discovery train. I'm also. Your season is out. I watched the first episode, but I haven't watched the second episode. And you know what? I like it. I, I like, like Star Trek Discovery. I think it's a good show. I think I, 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 I'm definitely not on the hate Star Trek Discovery bandwagon. Yeah. There's, I mean, there are good episodes and not good episodes. The yeah, Harry okay. Mudd episode with Rain Wilson is yep. an example of a very good one. But this new season takes it into the future, so it's not constrained by all the mythos that has to work in. And but, I think, this... but I think a lot of people will be like, well, that's hardly Star Trek then, is it? Because they've taken it away from the mythos. But every new Star Trek is hardly Star Trek, <laughs> Mason. True, yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, I feel like as a, as a lifelong uh, Trekkie slash Trekker, not really, but I've watched them all, uh, I, I feel like I'm, um, you know, there are a lot of people out there going, this isn't Star Trek, and I'm like, it is Star Trek. You say you're not Star Trek. I could say that, couldn't I? You could throw it right in their face. Like, I, I enjoy the fact that it is, you know, it is, it is a, the Star Trek universe isn't a utopia everywhere, you know? No. It's kind of like there are pockets of, you know, it's a big universe and there are pockets of selfishness and malice and evil and, and all around the thing, and people make mistakes and... That kind of thing. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I mean, the Federation exists to, like, enforce, you know, rules and shit as well. Yeah, yeah. They're not just there to be like, everyone's doing a great job. That's why we have all these warships. That's <laughs> exactly right. And there's always a No, they're exploratory general. starships, James. They just Fuck happen to off. be filled with phases. That is a torpedoes. bunch of bullshit, mate. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. It's um, like when, you know, when people come to Australia and they're like, we're here to bring peace and settle this land, but we're also going to shoot everybody here. Mm, you know what I mean? I know exactly what you That's what, what I'm saying. Mean. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, and look, it has kind of changed premise a few times yes. over the course of the series, but and they're um, also and like you know status and that season two, they're like let's make it more like the original series and bring in Captain Pike and etc. Yeah, and I like that element. Yeah. And then at the end of that series, they went and that ship disappeared into the future, and let's not put it in any of our records. Yeah, <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, bit? yeah, yeah. And so yeah. you know, that's look, not... and again, yeah, but again, that I like the idea that they're sort of playing with. Continuity and you fast know. and or loose. Yeah, and they're like Spock. Never mention the mirror universe. Don't do it. But it, what so if it when com- you encounter the mirror universe later in your life, just don't. Sh- just sh- 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 stum. <laughs> stum, Spock. What's stum? British, what is that? It's like a bit of shush. In what language? Like like British. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. I think it's German. I think it's German, but they say, say yeah. it in like Dad's Army or whatever. Oh, okay, like, yeah, fair sh- enough. Stum. Sh- 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 okay, cool. Probably say it in Indiana Jones as well. No doubt. Yeah. Mm. So you're into it. I'm and into Lower it. Decks was good as well. Sorry? Well, I liked Lower Decks. Yeah, it is good, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you bloody go, mate. Mm. Um, I watched Borat, Second Borat. I hear it's really good, but I haven't gotten to it yet. It's fine. Oh, okay. I hate to be the guy that's like... I mean, you love to be that guy. You're always that guy. I'm not always that guy. I feel like I'm more positive than, uh, than ever. Mm. But no, I think a lot of people are like... You're not hard enough on things. Oh, yeah, right. Uh-huh. Um, because a lot of things I'm just like, yeah. This is okay, you say to yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's got, don't get me wrong, it's got some very funny moments. Yeah, yeah. But it's 97 minutes long, but it, to me it feels like there's filler in it. I see. And what, right. I don't, what I didn't like about it was, that, like, there's the skits which I enjoy when they're like with real people, but then they'll do like little acting moments and stuff oh, like that. And right. I know, and the, the, Woman who I don't have a name, but who plays his daughter is amazing. Maria Bakalova. Yeah, that's right. And they're having like these moments and like because there's a through line of their father daughter relationship. Uh-huh. But for me, I'm like in this movie, Sasha Baron Cohen goes and lives with like some QAnon conspiracy theory type dudes. Yes. In a cabin mm-hmm. for days and doesn't break character. Right. Yeah. And I'm like. What was that like? Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you want, yeah. I, I, yeah. That bit scene with Rudy, Rudy Giuliani as well. Yeah. Like, how did, like, show me the behind the scenes as you're watching that unfold. Yeah, right. And you know what? That, that's. I, look, I, I, do, I, I do know the, the background of that, uh, but based on, based on, have you seen the scene? Mm. Is he just tucking his shirt in? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> I mean, look, the argument could be made. Go on. But. I mean, you could say you could say that, you sure. know, and there's no way he to has. yeah, and there's no way to prove definitively that that's not what's happening. Sure, right. But everything in the lead up to that moment, yeah. and it's, look, 
And I, it's not illegal because she's 25 and right. he didn't know she was supposed to be 15. Like that's oh. like it's it's just it's very creepy. I bet. But He's like a creepy man. But watching that scene and a lot of this movie, I didn't come away going like I've learned something new. I'm just like, yep, he sucks. Sure, I know. Yeah, yeah. Like I know. Yeah. So no, it was. Uh, but the problem with that scene is, though, I guess what you, what you could glean from it is he's very obviously could be compromised. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. It's very yeah. easy yeah. to blackmail the fact that, the, the, and film in a yeah, very precarious situation. Done, the fact that this was done for entertainment purposes yeah. just shows how easy it could be. Because yeah. if, if Sasha Baron Cohen wasn't a filmmaker and was instead mm. uh, an operative from another country who wanted to, yeah, in a way he is, I guess. Yes, he is in a way <laughs> to to ruin uh, the yeah. country. He could do that because people are like, well, if Borat could do it, you know, who else could do it? But at the same time, like an actual trained intelligence yeah, exactly. professional could probably do it. But at the same time, that is selling short. How smart Sasha Baron Cohen oh, yeah, actually sure. is, yeah, yeah. and the team that he has. I haven't around got around him. to it, but people recommended the Spy. The you recommended the Spy. I you? haven't. Wait, no, I haven't recommended it's a, that. It's a, a drama that he's in. Oh, it's I think we've Netflix. talked about it. But yeah, I yeah, but okay, I haven't watched cool. it yet. But uh, yeah, he's yeah. a good actor too. There you go. So uh, but, yes, yeah. Again, like behind the scenes stuff, but you know, there's it's you know it's. And look, I know some people are like, don't get political, but it's fucking Borat too. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yes. what am I supposed yeah, to talk right? about? Exactly. And. Uh, so yeah, it's um yeah, watch it obviously. You've yeah, got I will, Prime, yeah. so yeah, check it sure. out. Yeah. That's true. Mm. Uh here's a couple of things. Here's something that I saw uh on Instagram. Uh uh a listener of the show Tyler Smith got uh, a Weekly Planet tattoo. Oh yeah. That's on my Instagram if you want to look at that. Uh Nick Mesa M A S E A U. Uh just um I believe his partner is a tattoo artist. Uh she's poison underscore Ivy underscore art ninety four. Oh. And uh she had a, a cancellation, like a booking cancellation. <laughs> So the partner stepped in and was just like, I'll get a tattoo. Why Whatever not? that person was going to get, give I'll it get to me. I'll get that. Oh, Weekly Planet tattoo. All right, cool. I'll do it. I guess I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations. Incredible. looks great. Yeah, it does look Enjoy great. Enjoy it. Mm. Uh, and it's based on Bianca Kay's art. She did, yes. uh, she did a, a little picture of our avatars leaping for some gems. That's right. And in this it looks instance, like a Goonies-esque kind of. Yeah, yeah. But in this, in the tattoos yeah. instance, he's, um, uh, we're leaping for a sandwich. That's right. A big yeah. sandwich. I was going to say how big's a yeah. sandwich. But here's the thing. This, this is the thing that I've uh, watched this week and by watched I mean listened to. Mm. So friends of the show, Cam and exciting. Alexi, yeah. uh, who uh, people might know, they have a lot of podcasts about films, uh, Total Reboot. Yes. And, uh, and uh, um, uh, a mic check. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, last year they released a podcast called Finding Drago, which if you haven't listened to it, uh, is they put on their investigative journalist hats and they uh, investigate the elusive author of like a uh, like an unauthorized Rocky novel. Yeah. And it's like it's a real investigation. Like they're yes. really trying to track this guy down, but it's like a really funny show about that. And it's kind of like it feels like a like an NPR, like a, or like a yeah. re- episode of Reply All. It's like really well produced. Like people I've – uh, spoken to have said that it's the best podcast they've ever listened to. A lot of people have mentioned to that, their, yeah. To our faces. To, said yeah, that I to know. Us. They've said, right, rude, obviously. Right to it, very rude and hurtful, but they're not wrong. Like, it's a really great podcast, yeah. and it's like seven, I think yep. it's seven short episodes. And it's, if you're worried, like, at the end, it's, it, like, it closes. Yeah, yeah. yeah anyway, it's a really the, good, yeah. um, and and we listened to that last year, and we really yeah. liked it. And so um, in about a week's time, they're releasing mm. another season uh, yes. called Finding Desperado. And so Alexi sent a few people like in van. I have, I have yet to listen to it, but uh, you have. Yeah, he sent the yeah. first uh, episode to a, a bunch of people just to check it out. Mm. And uh, so in this season, mm. the, uh, Cam and Alexi have come across an amazing piece of film trivia, which is all the more amazing because despite the fact that it is in the Guinness Book of World Records, nobody can verify whether it's real or not. Okay, right. So they're, they're going to go out and they're going to track down – this fact that they've found, like this Very amazing good. piece of like film history and trivia, yeah, yeah. they're going to de- determine once and for all whether it's real or not. And I'm very excited. It's just, just funny. Awesome. But, anyway, but anyway, it's coming out next week, but I've just mentioned it in advance. So if you haven't listened to Finding Drago, I don't think that, I don't think you need to have listened to that to listen to this one. No. But I think. But you should. should. You should because it's good. It's yeah. a good. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I meant to give that a listen before now, but we'll, I'm sure right. we'll talk about it next week as well. Yes. Or when the show has, has more episodes out. But that is very excitement, isn't it? It's very excitement. Good, it's, good, good on those guys. Is that all the things we're reading? I think so, yeah. Then let's move it along. To letters? Yeah. Letters. The classic one was Letters, oh, letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. 
YouTube, Hello. YouTube has asked, has asked me, is this the video? Is this video what you were looking for? Completely. Yeah. Also, it boggles my mind. It's up to thirteen thousand views. That's all you. I, I guess. I know we're episode done. two. It couldn't be. <laughs> Mason. Yes. Um. People want to contact the show. It's weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com or they can get us up and they can hit us up on the Twitters. That's right. Hashtag weeklyplanetpod. Pod. Uh, I can go Pod. first. But Please you can do. also go first. Uh, so Fran sent this in and said, interesting topic for discussion. And how this works is uh, somebody asked James Gunn, Duncan on Twitter says, are Joel's actual, are, they, are those Joel's actual tattoos, as in Joel Kinnaman for Suicide Squad? Oh, yes. There's some images this week. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't put it in the news, but you know. Uh-huh. Uh, do you ever run into a problem being able to show tattoos due to copyright issues? Thanks. And James Gunn replied, they're, jo- uh, they're Joel's actual tattoos with some minor perm- uh, permutations, uh, like changing the Swedish text. Ah. We need to have the rights to show them. They all just say bork, bork, bork. <laughs> which in this case, and in Pete Davidson's case, we did. If you're an actor, I would consider not getting tattoos as they're a pain in the ass. Interesting. So right. I know like The Rock has like one across his chest and down yeah. one of his arms that they oh. often cover for movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting that it could be a detriment to a career. Yeah, right. Potentially, yeah. Is, so you were saying. has got that back tattoo. That's true, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, so are you saying that some of them, like if it's a, co- like if you have the Batman logo on yourself, for example. I guess, yeah. You'd have to, you'd have to contact DC Comics and yeah, be like. To put it in a movie. Hey, can I wear this, can I have this Batman tattoo in the Suicide Squad? Oh, I can't. Okay. Well, you probably couldn't. You probably could. Probably, probably yeah. could, right? So that's, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. So if any actors out there, don't tattoo your face, I guess. Yeah. And they showed that dude who was in that episode of the X-Files with the carnival and he was the guy who was all tattoos. Sure, the Enigma. The Enigma man. Yeah. What happened to him? He's still around, I think. My parents told me when I was I don't a want kid. to Google it. He's probably dead. Okay, I'll look it out. I'll look into it. But my parents told me that like if you get too many tattoos, like it'll, it like scuts off the your, your skin can't breathe and you die. Oh, wow. Yeah. The Goldfinger defense. Exactly. Like, I've never been like one to like be super interested in them, but that yeah. probably played a factor. <laughs> sure. <laughs> was, the lies your parents the lies told my you. Parents yeah, told, for sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did your parents tell you that it's illegal to have that internal car light? You know, the one that's in the roof? They didn't say it's illegal, yeah. but they just said it's annoying when it's on because you can't see properly, oh, which I is feel true. Like, yeah, I feel like maybe my parents told me it was illegal. <laughs> you can't have it on, and they should have, yeah. I mean, if they just said it was annoying, I would have been like, good. Yeah. That's what I'm all about. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, he's alive. The Enigma. Okay, that's good. good and know. Guinness World Records, most tattoos, et cetera. Oh, good. Good for him. There you go. Mm. Mm. What's your reading? Oh, let's have I a mean, look. I mean, whatever we're doing. Okay, this is from, this is from Pancakes Felix. Uh, there have been so many horrible live-action video game movies, but Zelda seems to avoid this. The game has a variety of stories to choose from and a large fan base. Why do you think it hasn't been adapted into a film yet? Nintendo. Is, yeah, I was going to say it's Nintendo. Yeah. Well, he's, he's got he's, the question: Is it lack of dialogue from Link? Is it too sacred? Is it a cliche story? But it's Nintendo. They're yeah. very, they're very. Uh, it could do protective. very well. I think they yeah. will start looking at that after this Super Mario movie that's coming out. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, live action would be interesting. Yeah, who do you that, get for Link? Tom Holland. But everyone's saying Tom Holland. He's too <laughs> of old course. at this point. Uh, probably because he's twenty four. Apparently, mm. yeah. I don't, yeah, no, that makes sense. There's been bad an- animated adaptations and CDI games and things like that. Though. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, mm. that is why. Uh, I've got one here, Mason. Go Some on. Some Sila Magic, who you might know. I know. You told me how to do that Tom Cruise trick, Mason. That's right. I think he's actually coming up on a Got Talent show. Oh, he's doing a Got Talent. I saw it on his social media and then it disappeared. I couldn't find it again. So maybe he's not. That's the magic of Maybe Sila. It is. But yeah, yeah, he's asked, "What would you and Meso do on a Got Talent?" Style show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I reckon we just come out and do an hour and a half of a podcast. <laughs> That's right. Let's do this. They start trying to play us off, but we've brought our own power supply. Can't, can't do it. They can't do it. we got this generator. Yeah. Do we have to do it well? Because I did nice Maybe do this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Am I on the board? Maybe. Do you want to be? <laughs> sure. Yeah, nice. That's what friends are for. <laughs> thunk, 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 thunk. <laughs> Yeah. Well, do you have an actual talent that you could do? I can do a headstand. Oh. I can sort of do a cartwheel, it turns oh. out. That's true, you can. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know if I do. Gosh. How long could you grow your beard? Just come out and go, this is pretty long, isn't it? And they, and they, yeah. And they, they're like, no. <laughs> you don't know how long I'm going to grow it, though. <laughs> it's, it could be really long. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd have to maybe, yeah, I don't know. What you need is a, you need. I need to. What I'd do is probably learn something that isn't that impressive. Yeah. But then I'd have a sad backstory. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. That's a good. That's what you need. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know a guy who went on to um, Australian Idol, mm-hmm. 
And he did have a bit of like a tragic backstory, which he didn't want to bring up. Oh. So they were constantly like, tell us a sad thing. They were just <laughs> no. like, and he didn't get, end up getting through. Yeah, right. Because I think because he didn't have like a narrative, which I'm not going to tell here. But, uh, but yeah. yeah right. So you really do need that in mm. some of these cases. Great question, Silo, and good magic all round. He's got some good magic. Yeah. yeah. Follow him at Silo Magic on all platforms. Yeah. What else, Mason? This is from Josh. Hi, Josh. Hi, guys. I'm an Australian currently living in New Zealand. I gave up chefing when I moved here a year ago and started working on kiwi fruit orchards instead. Give a bloody chefing for sheep shagging, mate. Got him. <laughs> New Zealand. They root sheep, but they say we root sheep, but yeah, they root heard, sheep. Yeah, they, they're wrong, though. That's the thing. And there's more of us than them. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, while it's a nice change from working in a sweaty kitchen all day, most of the work is quite tedious, and listening to the entire back catalogue of the Weekly Planet and a certain less successful podcast has made it a bit more bearable. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any podcast-related near-death experiences to report on. However, I do have something that I think might tickle you. My boss took our entire kiwi fruit picking crew skydiving at the end of the season. Oh. And the last thing I thought of before falling out of the plane was, oh, sweet, there'll be a new podcast episode out today. <laughs> So that's good. That was immediately play, replaced by pure terror. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys are well and the lockdown doesn't go on for too much longer. Yeah, well, uh, Can I be the official not, Australian yeah. chef orchard hand of the podcast? Yes, you can, Josh, can, from Australia. Yeah. 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 If re- some more restrictions might be easing this week. I think so, yeah. I don't know. That's right. But also our contract contact tracing system is fucked, so I don't yeah, know. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a good thought. To, mm. Yeah, I, I'd be worried that well, I'd, as I was falling out of the plane, I'd be like, I know what was the last song I was playing on Spotify. Oh, that's I hope it wasn't embarrassing. I bet it is. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. All mine are embarrassing. Let me check. You should check mine. Oh no, it's the Clash. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. That's that, quite. O- that's quite okay. That's embarrassing, Mason. No, it's not. You're so embarrassing. Oh, maybe a little bit. Oh yeah, maybe somebody be like, maybe the maybe the medical examiner is like Generation <laughs> Z, and they're like, oh, that's so cringe. I've the got Clash. George Ed- Ezra's Budapest, but I don't, I don't think that, that was is. me. I think that was maybe Claire. Okay, I don't know. I don't what know. That we is. share an account, or maybe it was me. I don't know. You know, <gasps> Mars and Budapest. Nah, nah, nah. You nope. know, something to forget. Nope, not at all. Fuck you. Yeah. Anyway, next thing, Mason. <laughs> next thing. Yes. That was uh, rude. I apologize. No, that's quite all right. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. I'm gonna find I'm gonna find another letter. Mm. Uh, this is from David King. Yes. Subject line, another ball surgery. Hey guys, I'm a long time listener and first time messenger. Just thought I'd let you know that I was also listening this week while waiting for my vasectomy. Anyway, keep up the great work and thanks for all the entertainment. Cheers, Dave. You're I'm welcome, thinking, Dave. I'm thinking about doing the old ball surgery. Like for, like for content? For content. No, for no more kids. No right. more at home content. Oh, for um for for Australia's Got Talent. <laughs> you're gonna have you you're gonna get a I'll get you to do it. I can't. Oh my God, and I've already got the knives. That's right. So perfect. It takes like 15. Oh, how about you just start throwing knives and if you happen to hit it by accident, you're like, yeah, this was a vasectomy. <laughs> this is what this is. Because of our sad backstories, everyone, <laughs> and then it's just standing up. <laughs> you know? Great. Great. Yeah. Would you mm. consider a vasectomy? Uh, oh, that's a quite a personal question. <laughs> you don't have yeah, to probably. answer that. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, folks out there, would you consider a vasectomy? That's our yes action no. item for this week. Let us know, yes or no, man or woman, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. What next, Mason? Oh, here's one. Get a load of this. I'm getting a load. This is from Johnny Reed. I mean, I it wouldn't says, be with Buddy if I get this bloody vasectomy. Sorry, go on. <laughs> I, it says, I made a movie and it's James's fault. I have dare you. How, hey guys, so since I graduated uni five years ago and studying to be an actor, it's always been my goal to write and direct independent films. And after watching James's video with Michael Shanks on how to get your movie made, I finally decided to create a production company with my best friend and my wife. I wonder if they're two separate people or if this is a guy who's like, you know, my wife's my Love best us. friend actually. Boo. <laughs> no, I say that. I know you do. Boo. Because you want to hang this out. I got you. <laughs> got you, James, I got you. Well, I'm just saying you want to hang out with somebody you like yeah. with your wife. You know That's what I mean? right. Yeah. What else though? That's cool. Yeah. Where can we find this thing? What's going on with it? Uh, let's see. Um, you can. We've we've put out our first short film film on our website, CarletEagleProductions dot com. So C A R L E double T Eagle Productions dot com. Very and good. They're crowdfunding to get their next film off the ground. That's very exciting. So he's already already bloody got one in the can. He's got another one going. Yeah, ready to go. That's there terrific. Go. Good that for him, good man. Stuff. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Where's your short film? Or regular slot length film. I'm too busy hanging out with all the listeners. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, maybe you could work on something together. Too many cooks, though, you know. That's true. Like working on a group project. I'm That's... like, hey, listeners of the Weekly Planner podcast, Weekly Wacker to Do's, mm. can, you, can you work on this scene? How are you scene? at uh, university group projects? How am I? Yeah. Well, I'm not in university. No, but... obviously not. But when I was. When you were, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I was I was very much no, I would get it done. Yeah. I I think I was probably the person who was divvying up. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuz you know there's that moment where you're, there's some everybody's sitting there and nobody wants nobody to Nobody knows to each anything. other or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I yeah. think I would have been like, yeah. I just be, I just remember being like I'm going to be the one who doesn't fuck this up. So whenever the like the 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 mark comes in, I'm like, I don't care what this is. So I just look mine. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> right, you know what right. I mean? I just don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I don't care what we get. As long oh, as- oh here's, here's an interesting one. This is from JP Popham. Hello. It says, James and Meso are the imposters. So sus. What, what, what? Uh, you may be well aware of the mobile PC game Among Us, which has been making its rounds on Twitch and other game streaming platforms. Ben wants us to play it for Caravan of Garbage. Oh, mm. but you might not be aware of us. The Discord server of great mates who regularly play together and have a great time. Oh. It's been a lot of fun getting to know people from around the world and equally fun to spam strangers in our game lobbies with Weekly Planet inside jokes as well as demand they listen to the podcast or we kill them. That's In the great. game, not in real life, we aren't monsters. Uh, thank <laughs> you for this pod and the amazing community it has produced. So that's from JP Popham from Georgia in the United States so of Americas. I don't know how you find that, but I guess you just look up Discord server and there may be great mates. So and then G-R-8 you'll find it. M8s. Yeah, if, someone will put it in the Facebook group and the Reddit group. It'll be fine. Perfect. Mate. That's, be that's terrific. It. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I I have watched some Among Us streams. People, uh, friends, friends of the show, and people I don't know. Yes, and uh, it looks. Uh, I think I could probably do one round before the stress became too much. Is it? Does it look like easy to understand and control? Oh yeah, no, I, I get it. I totally get it. Well, as long as you get it, mate. No, I get it. I, you don't yeah. want to be out of the loop. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, right. Well, I'm glad you're having a grand old time over there. That is a grand old time. Yeah. Yeah. Is that everything? I think so. Yeah. All right. Also, uh, oh, you know what? The reason I wanted to read that out, firstly, because of uh, that. Yes. I'm going to shout that out, the, the Discord group. But also, um, the term sus. I feel Australians invented the term sus. We've been using the term sus since before Among Us. But now uh, it's, a, it's an internet thing. People are like, really? oh, people are like, oh this guy's sus. Well, Australians have been saying, saying sus for years. I didn't know it was a new thing. I just thought it was a thing that everybody did everywhere all the no, time. I don't think so. I think uh, the Americans are learning about things being sus. I don't like that. No, I don't Do like that. Do they know either. how we call them seppos? I hope not. Oh, no. I uh, hope they don't figure out why. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really call them that. It's just like a thing. It's like an old colloquial term, isn't it? I call some people Seppos. Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. it. stands for septic tank, which <laughs> rhymes with yank, yank yeah. which is yank is like the Australian expression for Americans that people don't really use. James, you spoiled it. No, who cares? People wow. got Google. Wow. Nothing secret that's anymore. The one, that's the one piece of uh, Australiana that was killed. Well, they're gonna send going to send fucking Paul Hogan after me? Yeah, maybe. I'll kill that prick. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> this has been a loose one. Late night, James will threaten to kill anybody as long as it's Paul Hogan. As long as it's Paul Hogan. Yeah, my God. All right. That's that, the whole show, I reckon. That's the show. show. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. I hope everybody's doing all right out there. Yeah, man. hope everybody's having a grand old time playing their Among Us, being the Mungus. Among Us. Or not. Yeah. Um, I, I hope everybody's um, um, staying safe and wearing a mask if you want to wear a mask and getting out and voting if you're American or if you're Australian and specifically Victorian, and you postal voted in the recent council elections. I haven't done that yet. Is it too late? Yes. Oh, wow. Hang on, let me check. Oh, no, you've still got tomorrow. You've still Uh got tomorrow. I'll probably forget. Okay, great. (laughs) Anyway, go out and vote, I say. Yeah, definitely. Whether it be in America for the big big prize. Wherever you are. Or the postal elections. Definitely, definitely. For for rates, if you want the rates to to go down or whatever. You want to make sure you're... I mean, I know I've, I've like... I know it's become somewhat of a thing like James is like railing against the local councils or whatever. <laughs> so, I'm actually, I've come around on it. I think yeah. they're really important to like maintaining your community. Here's the thing. I think either one of us could become like local councillors because I got my little thing. It's like yeah. here's all the candidates. Somebody hadn't even put a photo in. They hadn't <laughs> submitted a photo. <laughs> really? You want me to vote for you? Maybe that's a tactic. No. Yes. Oh, like I'm so authentic. Like yeah. I'm about the issues. Or that like I'm so ugly this benefits me to not put it on here. Nice because of their Ugmos. It's their Ugmos. Yeah, absolutely. You may be right. Anyway, uh, apart from that, I hope yeah. everybody's doing all right. And um, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, telling a friend yeah. or telling somebody in an Among Us server Definitely. against their will. Yeah. Or, uh, as we said a couple of weeks ago, tricking somebody into listening with lies. Do we, uh, we get any responses to that? Not really, but I hope we do this week. Me too. Um, and, um, yeah, and uh, thank you for leaving a nice review. James, you got one right got there? a couple of reviews right here. Mason nice. just brought them up in front of me. This one is from uh, Just, uh, well, it's Just, but the fi- this is a f- <laughs> five, and this is just Paul, the greatest of mates. Love listening to James and Nick. Anytime there's Ooh. an empty void in my brain, and these days there's a lot. Started listening to them when I was, uh, that, and they started unknow- uh, unknowingly back in 2014 with my dad on long car trips when I was only 13. Fast forward six years later, my dad is gone. Oh, boo. Uh, but I still listen to these mates all the time. Thanks for teaching me uh, the word grogan and filling <laughs> my ears with Australian gold. 
So happy to do that. Uh, thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you very much. Time. Hope you're doing all right out there. Got this other short uh, short review from Tanner J1227. Says, dope. Been listening to these nerds for four plus years and somehow still have uh, not gotten bored of them. Probably because I'm just as big a nerd, if not more. Well, that's dope. That is a challenge and Paul Hogan will be coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's... that's well, like Paul Grogan. Ah, that's true because he's a big part of shit. <laughs> Because the way. tax avoid, yeah, avoid yeah, yeah, that's right? all, that whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the stuff. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway uh, look, if you'd like to get <laughs> in contact with us. He's not that bad probably, is I he? I don't know. I don't know anything about him. Uh, yeah, anyway, if you'd like to get in contact with us, you can... No, uh, didn't he write, didn't he claim all the writing credits on all the Crocodile probably, Dundee movies? Probably, probably. we talked about that? Yeah, I think it's on like, um, it might be on How Did This Get Made, I think. Okay, gotcha. Track it down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, if you'd like to get in contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at g- gmail, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp, yes. you can go to a planetbroadcasting.com where you can uh, have a look at all the podcasts on the Planet Broadcasting Network, including Auntie Donny. Po- Do- Auntie oh Donny. Auntie, Auntie, Auntie Donna Donny. Po- Auntie Donny. Yeah. The Auntie Donna podcast. Check them out before they become. You can be like, I listen to their podcast before they're on Netflix and they're super famous. You That's know? right. You've got yeah. like a couple of weeks to you got, do that. You've got two weeks to do it, to listen to every episode. Ed Helms is on the most recent episode. So oh, check was that out. he? I haven't yeah. heard that. Great. Yeah, yeah, terrific. They're, they're having a good old chat with Ed Helms. That's so really good. Mm. Um, um, you can also sign up to the newsletter from the great Rob Collins. He'll tell you about all the stuff that's coming up every week. Mm. Uh, he's at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. He's also at Raw Collins. I'm uh, Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm Nick Maso, N I C K M A S E A U. James, you're Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. I am. If you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You can chuck in a buck. We would love that. We'd very much appreciate it. Any, any loose change you find in the couch cushions, we'll, we'll take it. We will, you know definitely. I mean? You can also right. go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. You want to click through, uh, buy some stuff on Amazon, come right to your door. And we it will. Something. You'll be like, this is just what I ordered, probably. <laughs> That's right. Or you yeah. can go to BigSandwich.co, sign up, get all the bonus stuff, all the commentaries. We've got that Freddy versus Jason commentary, which should be up now, I think. It will be up right now because Collings is all over that. Nice. Unless he's forgotten, but he never he's has. He's never forgotten anything. Maybe this is the first time, though. Who knows? Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, that's right. I don't think he has, literally has. He's never forgotten. Good for him. Thickest device. Thickest device, Mason. That's right. That's what he's skating. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm. right. Anyway, sorry. Um, 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 we got some T-shirts on tpublic.com. All kinds. We've got real ones. We've got bootleg ones. Just get, just get you, you um, Whatever you want. Pick your poison, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's right. And uh, and thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and Rackham for all their musical themes. Next week, don't know. We don't. Uh, well, Mandalorian will be out, That's so we'll true. talk a little bit about that. But Best uh, Thanksgiving movies. Oh. Most you... cursed Thanksgivings. I don't know when Thanksgiving is. Probably. I think it's in December. Wasn't, doesn't, November? Doesn't, doesn't that December. have like horrible origins or something, Thanksgiving? Yeah, it does. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Pumpkin spice. Yeah, but some people don't like that. They're like, uh, buh, 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 buh. But like, <laughs> sure let are. people enjoy what they want, man. That's right, yeah. And that's fine. Unless it's really terrible. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which I don't think it is because why would they keep bringing it back? Oh, Common Spice is pretty good. Never had it. Nice. Mm. Uh, that's the show. That is the whole show. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next week, I reckon. So bloody grab that gem, why don't you? And goodbye. Yeah. Paul, me- Gro- Paul Grogan. Paul Grogan. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.